Good morning and welcome to another day here on the AM show. It is Thursday morning and you know how it is. I always say that once God has given you an opportunity to live, it means that he's granting you an opportunity to right the wrongs of yesterday. So uh, do well to right your wrongs of yesterday. As we all do, we can build this life and make this world a better place for all of us to live in. So once again, on behalf of the team, please welcome to the AM show. Now, this is how the show will run. We'll have the news review segment, and uh, being a Thursday, the NDC parliamentary candidate for the South Tong uh, constituency, Maxwell Lukoto, will be our guest today. And then after that, we'll bring you AM Sports, where Mufta Nabila will be telling us everything that's happening in the world of sports. We know that something is happening in Budapest. What's the latest from that uh, World Athletics Championship that's happening? Uh, then we'll move on to the big stories where we'll be having uh, Mutala Mohammed, who is MP for Tamale Central, being one of our guests, as well as Davis uh, Ansa Opoku, OPK, MP for Mpriya. So joining us for us to discuss issues that will drive Mother Ghana forward. Now, the Christ the King International School is holding its Family Fun Day. We'll tell you more later on the show when we host uh, the reps from the school. And when uh, would also uh, host the University of Mines and Technology, UMAT. And it's exciting to talk to you, UMAT because they're doing uh, some extraordinary things in the university. UMAT topped the virtual directional drilling rig simulator design option in the 2022-2023 International Drill Robotics Competition organized by Drilling Systems Automation Technical Section on behalf of the Society of Petroleum Engineers. This year's drill robotics contest attracted 13 teams across the globe. It involved seven countries from uh, four continents. Six teams competed in a virtual rig category, including UMAT, the only university from Africa, and they won it. So we'll hear from them uh, on this show as well. And you know what? I always say that this show is made with you in mind, and so your thought is very much welcome. Uh, join us later on with your thoughts, uh, plus all the social media reactions on topics that we've discussed here on the show, as well as trending stories. So join us on our Facebook page and leave your comment there. We'll pick it up and share that with the rest of the world. And that's how the show will be. I am uh, Samuel Kojo Braze. I'm a voice representing a team led by Derek Echo, Sam and Kingsley. Um, on behalf of them, please welcome to the show. Up next is AM News. Good morning and let's do AM News now. Now, a staff of the National Identification Authority, NIA, has petitioned the governing board of the authority to review and reverse the grounds for his dismissal. This is coming barely a week after the NIA dismissed 10 of its staff for abuse of office. One of them is Martin Akowa, who says his only crime was reporting to work earlier than usual to register the usually overwhelming Ghana applicant. Uh, Ghana card applicant. Now, my colleague Michael Ashley has more. The National Identification Authority has dismissed 10 staff members following investigations into allegation of misconduct, extortion of funds from Ghana card applicants, excerpts of a statement from the National Identification Authority announcing the dismissal of some of its staff for misconduct, extortion and manipulating the registration system for personal gain at some of its offices, including the Lang Quantana Municipal Office. The allegations against the dismissed officers included demanding and accepting unauthorized fees from Ghana card applicants, as well as manipulating and registration system for personal gain. Some of the affected people are fighting off these claims. So in Medina, we had a peculiar issue because we were occupying the offices of uh, the, uh, the Ghana Revenue Authority. Martin Akowa is one of those rejecting the grounds for his dismissal. Um, as a team, we needed to have a strategy on how to decongest the small space we were given in the GRA office. So it required that um, we come in a bit early 
to take care of those two appointments, the GRA applicants who are coming in to get a Ghana card instead of 10, and bosses sending through applicants through me to assist in registering and issuing Ghana cards. I must put on record that I never instituted that early working hours for my personal gains. I did it purposely to decongest my office because the office was a small space given us by GRA and they were constantly on me that uh, Ghana card applicants had taken over their all, entire office and they were not hiring any office for Ghana card applicants. It's the office, they've given me a space. And so it was so wrong, my applicants had taken over the office. Prior to his dismissal, he stayed home for nearly 14 months after he was interdicted in April 2022. It was very difficult, coupled with the present economic situation in, 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 in the country. I have a wife, I have a family who sometimes depend on me, and so it was very unbearable. It, 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 it took every fiber of me out. I was devastated as because my only crime was starting work early than 8 a.m. Martin has petitioned the NIA governing board to investigate and review the grounds for his dismissal. So I've requested the authority to, to send me a copy of uh, the record of proceedings. And I've again gone on to petition the NIA governing board. Um, I'm trusting in the abilities and the competencies of the NIA governing board to come through for me. And so um, the cases with the NIA governing board, so, if they have not even acknowledged receipt of my letter. But I'm still believing their competencies and abilities to come through for me. Martin plans to seek redress if the governing board fails to respond soon. For Joy News, Michael Ashali. The government has launched a seven-year project to reduce poverty and improve access to socio-economic infrastructure. Local government minister Dan Boche, who announced the $24 million plan, reveals that his effort will ensure accountability. There's more in this report by Jacqueline and Sumaya Boa. To reduce rural poverty issue in Ghana, the government in the year 2014 launched phase one of the integrated rural development. The project, which ran for seven years, aimed at improving agricultural productivity and improve socioeconomic infrastructure. Based on the success of the phase one, government has launched phase two of the project, which will cost $24 million. The phase will facilitate job creation and improve access to socio-economic infrastructure such as schools, rural clinics, sanitation facilities, amongst others. The Minister for Local Government, Decentralization and Rural Development, Daniel Boche, said to avoid misappropriation of funds, government will increase social accountability measures. This progress, as we said, even though I was elaborating too much on the part of the monies that are used to pay for project management. I suspect the reason why they do that is to cure the very thing that you are talking of. The assemblies have their staff already, from MC, coordinator, director, engineers, planners. But the project allows for employment of extra or external consultants who validate all the plans that they bring. So in all these projects, I can testify that in the project one, there was value for money. All projects that were started were completed. He further revealed that most organizations and NGOs are unable to account for the cost involved in projects, which results in non-continuity of most projects in rural areas. They have the flexibility. Some of them allow you to even rehabilitate or continue existing projects. But it's all because of accountability. That's the issue. If we take funding from Project A, or the, uh, yes, a Project A, to build a school building, and you get to the roofing level and you don't finish, another funding source gives you money. Do you, how do you convince the second funding source that you use their money to complete the first one? And so you come and you commission a classroom block, then you say that we got funding for both Project A and Project B. That is why it comes back to the assembly. That's why I've been emphasizing the role of district assemblies. Whoever you are, and the law says that they're supposed to coordinate projects of even NGOs. You cannot say that I'm an NGO, I've entered the district, I'm going to do what I like. No, it's wrong. The CEO of the Social Investment Fund, Justice Mensah Amankwa, states that one component of the project will ensure that rural communities have access to credit facilities to encourage the growth of small and medium enterprises. Some of the remote centers are quite difficult to assess. So when we, when we send this project there, it will go a long way to transform 
their life. Then we have the macro finance, where we are also talking to some of the banks that can reach out to the interior, as Honorable is saying. We don't want to uh, hold on in the, just the center of the desert capital. We want to go inside. The second phase of the Integrated Rural Development Project is expected to end in the year 2027. For Joy News, Jacqueline and Sumaya Boa. Well, the National Communication Authority has launched a digital audio broadcasting technology which will alleviate some of the challenges by traditional radio. Minister for Communication and Digitalization, Esla Ousu Ekufo, says the new platform will usher in an array of uh, choices for listeners. She was speaking at the launch in Accra. There's more in this report. Over the years, frequency modulation has become a critical medium for communication, entertainment and information dissemination in Ghana. As Ghana's population continue to grow, the demand for FM radio stations has surged. The Minister for Communication and Digitalization, Ursula Akufo, revealed that in the year 2022, the National Communication Authority gave authorization to 707 FM stations to operate in Ghana, but less than that number is currently operating. With the rapid development of radio and TV industry and its convergence with telecommunications, it has become necessary to ensure the quality of broadcasting services do not deteriorate. Statistics indicate that as at the end of 2022, the NCA had authorized 707 FM stations, out of which 513 are in operation, a very congested field. According to the project director of the digital audio broadcasting, Bernie O'Neill, the radio landscape in Ghana is congested, which explains the advent of the new audio platform in Ghana. That, that, that congested FM issue that we heard mentioned on Ghana, there's over 700 stations that are uh, licensed to be on FM and I think there's over 500 that are on air. So there's just nowhere to go for broadcasters to innovate. And as I was saying, Radio is under threat from all the new online services that are being offered, so radio must keep up and it must digitize as well. The DAB is a radio technology which will ensure transmission of digital audio content over airwaves and the trial has already commenced in Accra and Kumasi. For Joy News, Jacqueline and Sumaya Boa. Uh, finding places to charge your phone when the battery runs down can be a daunting task. Though sometimes a nearby store comes in handy, it might be reluctant to share the power. What if there is a charging station where a 50 peso coin can give you 30 minutes of charging time? The Sunyani Technical University students have come up with such innovation. Love FM's Chrissy Deborah speaks with Fidao's Abdul Karim for Tech Thursday. Geeks. Okay, this one it works like this. When you get there, all you need is a crane, and it takes in 50 pesos, one CD and two CDs. And the lights here is 50 pesos is blue, one CD is yellow, and then two CDs is green. So when you get there, you slot in your crane like this. The crane has entered, so it gives you the number, of, uh, the, minute, the minute you should charge. And this one, 50 percent gives you one CD to charge. As you can see, my phone is on, which means it's charging. So when the time is up, it will disconnect automatically. So when you want to charge it for one, one hour, 30 minutes, you have to slot in one CD. And as you can see, I have one CD here. You remove your phone. If not, it will not charge. You slot in your one CD. As you can see, it has entered. Plug your phone and it gives you one uh, 30 minutes to charge. That's a wonderful innovation there. Now, to other stories, residents in Oti Regional Capital, Dambai, are angry about the deplorable state of town roads in the area. Checks reveal the contractor working on the roads has abandoned the job and left the site due to financial and some contractual issues. This has stalled the work on at least two critical roads in that region. Peter Seno has more. The My Town Roads were scheduled for completion at least before the end of 2021. By September 2020, most of the culvert works were done by city construction. 
as of August 2023. This is the state of affairs of Damai Town Roads. Even the very street leading to the residence of the regional minister is that terrible. This is as a result of works abandoned by the contractor due to financial and contractual issues. The study school is a cause for worry for residents at the regional capital. <laughs> This road should have been completed in 2020, but it has been left till now that gravels have been poured on it. The state of the road is really worrying. We are asking government to fix it. If you obey them or that side that send obey over cross so abah abey business no a problem. It is really worrying us. How to move from the other side to transact any business is a challenge. How to commute from home to my shop is a problem. The mud you see now is the same dust you see during the dry season. Oh, this time no. I'm saying I'll touch your own. Sun or pet time is some footro. Footro. What do I do with her? I don't know. What do you mean? Bibia Poto. Would you have said a cannabis or mini Sankasa cano and a vetcher mono? Quan and Yakura crack 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 crack. If it's a circle of Modisa and Yafu, a Gucano sono. That's the minister's car. The muddy gravel is making things worse. Pregnant women could have miscarriage or even die if they want to access health facilities in the area. If they want to fix the road, then they must do it well, else we will block the road. Even the minister cannot go to his residence. The abandoning of works and sites in the region has led to the stall of works on two critical roads in the region. Damae Tunkwanta and Jessica Turara are the affected roads. A visit to the sites saw empty environment and evacuation of all machinery. Joshua Mwainam Makubu is your two regional minister. This is the street leading to his residence. He says he shares in the sentiments of residents. I am a citizen before I am a regional minister. In just the same way, any other resident of OT region or user of the rules you have just mentioned will feel. I feel uh, much the same way. Uh, Jassi Ken, Rara, Nkwanta, Dambai, Dambai Township rules, they were all under the same contractor, city constructions. It was on site until uh, work came down. Uh, somewhere around 2022, I had a couple of engagements with it. There was even a time they brought in, a, what they call it, a document for me to sign for extension of contract, which I did. And then they said it was in the rainy season. They were waiting. When the rain subsided, they would come back to site. But before I realized, they had started packing uh, items. From he is also appealing to residents to be patient while the process to resolve the challenge continues. I appreciate what we go through on a daily basis. Just be a little bit patient with me and support me in prayers. At least if you have any idea, my office is always open. Let's talk and see how we can move together. Peter Sanu for Joy News. <laughs> Now, to the Upper West now, and the regional minister, Dr. Hafez Ben Sali, is worried about the, how late staff of the various assemblies report to work. He describes this as a drawback to the work of the assemblies and is asking the Metropolitan Municipal and District Chief Executives to instill discipline in their duties. Dr. Ben Sali made the statement at the Upper West Regional Coordinating Council's meeting. The Regional Coordinating Council per Article 255 of the 1992 Constitution of Ghana mandates the council to meet at least twice in a year where key issues bordering on the region are discussed and solutions preferred to them. One major challenge which Upper West Regional Minister 
Dr. Hafiz bin Sali saw as a drawback to the region's development is the attitude of staff of some district assemblies in the region to work. Performance monitoring report of the local service for 2023-2022 has brought a canker in this region to the fore. The report indicates that lateness is endemic in district closer to Wa, the regional capital. Officers report to work late and close early in the districts, thus Nadoli Keliu, Wa West, and Dafiema Buse Isa. This unpopular practice must stop. I charge the respective municipal and district chief executives and their con they are coordinating directors to instill discipline in their offices. Another issue which also came to the fore was in the education sector. Whereas candidates in the West African Senior Secondary School Certificate Examination have upped the ante, improving on the past weight in the last three years, results in the Basic Education Certificate Examination, BCE, continue to take a nose dive. The, the three year trend of regional YC performance in the core subjects is as follows. English language, 2022, 30%, 2021, 44%, 2022, 45%. On the other hand, the overall performance in the basic school in the basic education certificate education consistently declined as indicated in the table below 2020 49 percent 2021 48 percent 2022 36 percent now this is the chief executive of the sunny east in the bono east region J.K. Kofi Jima is working towards improving the academic performance of students in, the, in this area. He has organized quiz competitions for pupils from the basic to the senior high school levels. And Anna Sadat has more. The Sydney East District of the Bono East Region has for some time now been performing poorly at the BEC and SSCE levels. This, according to the DCE for the area, GK Kofijima is largely as a result of weak supervisions and the lack of competitions among schools from the basic to the senior high school level. To change the narrative, the district chief executive organized quiz and reading competitions for all schools across the district. This system is going to force my quality teachers to be able to teach so that we can improve academic performance of our students. And then we are also of the view that once the teachers uh, come in into this program and then some of them fall into the last position, some fall into the middle position, and fortunately those who have it will fall under the first position, it will force teachers, it will force students to learn, that the teaching and learning will improve teaching and learning in our district. He says the competition, which is the first of its kind in the district, will prepare the pupils to pass their exams as well as prepare them to reach high highs in future. If we've been able to raise the image of education, everything will follow. Because if we want to get good assembly members, we want to get good teachers, we want to get good nurses, we want to get good ministers, good president, then it must start from education and it has to start from primary level, GHS to SS level. When we get all this, it means that the district within the trickle and I will change. Some of the competing students lauded the organizers of the contest and called for its continuity. I'm very delighted about this program. In fact, I'm former one student. And after the program, we are the second. And in fact, and the way that the program takes place, in fact, I'm very delighted. He's doing his best. He's trying. We are, we are begging him that this should not be the first and the last. He should try organizing many for us to compete with each other. Acting President and Chidom Hen of the Nkomi Traditional Area, Nana Osru Krunku III, is optimistic that the effort would lead to the upgrade of general academic performance of the peoples in the area. I'm saying, when the first of its kind, now, this is the administration, I'm saying, 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 I
It we are putting things together. Na nanu mu e putu one more effort to nina together. Sene be ya ya be ya upgrade in form of performance. Aye school so no. Na di we no ba ya di e ya niya di mu papa papa. Ya ni mu say ya ba ba assembly no ambaso. Any DC coffee di ma ambaso. The DC further noted that the competition will be made an annual festival to emphasize the performance of both teachers and students across the district. I earlier on mentioned that without this kind of assessment, it will be difficult for us to know whether or not the teachers are performing, the students are learning. So we are going to make it annual festival every year. We are going to organize it uh, for the reading competition for the primary school, uh, GHS quiz competition, and then the SHS level debate. And as Sabit joins Kijiji. And that's how we wrap up this bulletin. There's more news on myjoyonline.com. News review is up next. Welcome to the news review segment, and uh, uh, let's get into the papers this morning. Our guest is the NDC parliamentary candidate for North for South Tong, Maxwell Lukuto. Um, Max, good morning and welcome. Good morning, my brother. I hope you are doing well. I am. Well, I'm well. It's. Uh, I'm only imagining the time I'll come to Volta Region to enjoy, you know, the hospitality in the region as well, especially from a facility. Yeah, anytime, any day, you are welcome. <laughs> uh, my facility is open to you 24 7, mm. and uh, you are always welcome to enjoy the Volta region as you so wish. You know, Volta region is one of the very serene environments we have. Yeah. And because of the distance from Accra and Tema, most revelers from Accra would wish to just drive less than an hour, and they are here. We have the serene Volta, and especially my constituency, very welcoming. You have the Abulu. I don't know whether you have enjoyed the Abulu and the Bovinulu and the, the Wama Thousand. No, yes, no, I haven't. Did. But you like that, Odi? Uh, I mean, I've heard so much about the Abolo, so maybe when I come out, I'll try that one. I'll give you the Abolo and that Odi. Some from <laughs> sugar coffee, the Kutam and the Vara, and all Ethan Varos will welcome you to my consensus, and I'm sure you enjoy it. Okay, all right. Uh, let's see. I'll put this up from your busy schedule and come over. You, well, you'll be welcome. Thank you. I'll one day come there. Um, sure. I've enjoyed my western region so much, so I have to try the Volta region and see how it goes, but I, I, I'll come around. Um, yeah. I, we have the Daily Graphic newspaper today, we have the Daily Guide, and we have the Business Finder. Now, on the Daily Graphic, it says, Wasi rating papers begin with oral English exam for Ghana only. Okay. Now, Superdelegate Conference, MPP aspirant, justify inclusion Saturday. It comes with a photograph of uh, uh, Professor Aaron Mike Okwe, former Speaker of Parliament. Um, 2023 Ghana Teacher Prize launched, and EU injects 120 million euros into West Africa exports. Wow, this is good. Um, also from the Daily Guide newspaper, it says... I don't fear prison, Jachi Kwesin says. It comes with a beautiful photograph of Mr. James Jachi Kwesin. And NDC MPs, police agree on BOG protest. Seven five for uh, two slot in MPP superdelegate confab. Um, uh, okay. It comes with a photograph of uh, Alan Tramanting and Dr. Mahmoud Baumia. Now, ECG sacks 11 top officials. Oh, okay. And Duca opens workshop for small scale miners. That also on page nine of the Daily Guide newspaper. Uh, on the business finder, it says FDIs must be mutually beneficial. GIPC boss tells captains of industry. We will continue to take our airport safe, uh, to keep our airports safe, and offer pleasant travel experience. Um, it comes with a picture of MD of the Ghana Airport Company Limited, Madame Pamela Johnson. So those are the stories here. Let's start with the Daily Graphic newspaper. 
Now, if we go to page uh, three, it says MPP aspirant justify inclusion on Saturday. Now, the story uh, says the fears raised to decide who leads the new patriotic party in the 2024 presidential election enters the home stretch as the ruling party hosts its superdelegate conference on Saturday to reduce the 10 aspirants to five. The suspense field special electoral college will be a prelude to the crucial national conference on November 4, 2023, where the party's flag bearer for the 2024 general election will be selected. The national wide poll follows months of intensive campaign by the aspirant across the length and breadth of the country to win the hearts and minds of the delegates in whose hands their destiny lies. The candidates have been rallying the delegate with their capabilities not only to transform the Ghanaian economy and superintend over the country's development, but also to lead the MPP to break the eight-year cycle of governance between the MPP and the NDC. Uh, Mr. Lukuto, I'm, I'm sure you being on the other side, you are, you are just praying that you get a candidate that you can easily beat. Uh, what are your uh, expectations going into Saturday? First of all, let me use the opportunity to wish my WASI candidates uh, all the best in the, the forthcoming exams, especially uh, students of my old school, which I was the national president of uh, Soga School. Uh, so I wish them all the best in the WASI exams. As for the MPP super delegates, confab, whatever it is, whether it's a beauty contest, whether it's a contest of ideas, whether they are going to choose somebody who can break their eight or who has already broken themselves, we, we are not too sure what they are going to do, but whoever emerge as the winner, we are solid on the ground. We are waiting for them. And uh, I, I set up to understand why uh, the headline stated that seven are going to justify for a position of two. It presupposes that people feel Baumia Alan Chemanti and maybe Kennedy and Japan have taken the first three slots and they are only looking for the two other slots. And the Adani moves the, uh, uh, the uh, other uh, 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 Kabinai uh, Japan, uh, Dr. You know, uh, Akoto Fiye, Joe Gatti, and Dr. all of you. Kuku, Joe Gatti, and all the other people are all fighting to get two slots. It's interesting the way MPP can come out with some of these things. But it stands to reason that they know what they are going to do. And people have already been described as system candidates. and. They are the candidates the presidency feels can continue with their uh, loot share government that they have created. The disprudency that we have uh, experienced as Ghanaians over all these seven years and still counting, I wonder why they feel that Baumia will be a better place to continue for them. And we are just waiting for them. Whoever they bring, I'm not sure we are too bothered about. We are just uh, almost finishing with our constituency election so that we are solid and to match any time any day they come. Ghanaians have seen the level of depredation that we have experienced over these years and the way we are sliding down the door drums. And I'm not sure anybody would want to listen to this mantra of breaking the eight any longer. And so for us, whatever they will do Saturday, I heard some few of them running their mouth on TV and all those other things. We are just waiting for them to break themselves and then they'll come and meet us. So, so for you, it's they are, they are uh, I mean, they are, what they are doing is much ado about nothing because in the end... So I, I, I usually describe it as a beauty contest. It's not really about ideas because what is the, what is the new thing they, they have to espouse that will interest Ghanaians? We, we continue to see every, every day pockets dry and then we have people suffering every day. Salaries remain the same. Water and electricity is just about to be increased per September. And we continue to experience the hardship under them. Bank of Ghana has gone down the door drum. They still want to push things around, or, uh, down, and truth as well. And so for me, there's nothing new that they will bring up. Which of them? Jogati, Alan Chimati, Trade Ministry, uh, Baobia, Vice President, and Kennedy Ajipo, who can just insult anybody and everybody who runs his mob as if there's no tomorrow. And today he wants to be, they, he behave as a Pope of the Catholic Church. I don't see any of them who. Is supposed to be a threat to us as NDC. Ghanaians have seen their worth, and none of them can explicate themselves from whatever hardship we are experiencing now. And so for me, it's it's much ado about nothing. It's just that as a democratic party, as they claim they are, 
they have to present somebody, and that's what they are going through. But ideally, they would have just given up and say, oh, enough of it. Come and take over and run the show. Let's see how you, you, you can bring back hope to Ghanaians. The NDC is the only party for now who Ghanaians are looking up to to bring uh, the best we can experience in governance from 2025. So for them, it's the end of them. Eh? We just hope that they break themselves and come and beat us. So it's much ado about nothing, really. All right. Um, let's see how it goes. Uh, whether in the end it will be much ado about nothing or something ado about something. What, what, what do you think yourself? Do you think they are up to something? No. Well, Sincerely, if I ask, do you think as a Ghanaian, not as a journalist speaking to me now, do you think they have anything to offer to us after 2025? Well, that question can best be answered by our viewers. So let's let's leave it to them and see. What That's okay. Do. Sure, I'm sure viewers would answer by themselves. Exactly. Now, if we move to page 13, it says EU inject 120 million euros into West Africa export. The story is written by Maclean Kofi. It says the European Union has invested 120 million to boost the competitiveness of exports on the international market from Ghana and other West African countries. In Ghana, over 100 million cities has been injected into three main value chains, namely cassava, mango, and pineapple, and cosmetics and personal care product. The investment in Ghana was to improve the competitiveness of Ghanaian exports on the global market. The investment made in the last three and a half years was the EU's contribution towards the West African competitive Competitiveness Program, WACOMP, a partnership initiative between ECOWAS and EU. The program seeks to strengthen the competitiveness of West African products and to enhance the integration of ECOWAS countries into the regional and international trading system, including the African continental free trade area after. Now, um, this is good news, of course. Good news. Now, I'm told this has been running for the past three years. How do we ensure that beyond it, we are taking it a step further beyond even their, their support. Yeah, of course. So those are the things we need to look at. That once we have this foreign direct investment, which angle do they go? Yes, we have mentioned cassava, we've mentioned pineapple, and we mentioned something else. These are things that we can easily produce in our land. But the question is that what policies do we have around our Greek and this foreign direct investment? There are a lot of things we can do for ourselves. And then the little we do will not be able to send us as far as we wish to. And so when these things come, it depends on policy direction. Do we still divest some of these funds into some other things and then we don't concentrate on the main reason why uh, the EU have come to invest? What other policies do we have around engaging, especially the youth uh, in this agricultural business so that we can have a lot more? What are our policy about uh, 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 equipment, how they bring, we bring them in, whether we send them to the real places, whether our soil maps indicate to us exactly where we can get a lot out of these very uh, uh, crops or products we wish to produce. How are we driving this? Thing? How are we encouraging those who want to go to agri to do? Are we leaving them to their faith and just giving this money to cronies, friends, and we are really not looking at those who are into the farming, but we'll give the money to other people to go do other things. Well, some of us, those are the things we need to check. It should not be just said that so much has been brought, uh, so much has been invested. The question is that, are we doing monitoring and evaluation? How much benefits have we made out of these things? And the EU government, that brings the thing. How well are they monitoring to be sure that the investment they have brought, it has yielded the the same result they are looking for. So for me, it's good news. Uh, the more we get these things, the more we should encourage ourselves to be prudent in the spending and make sure that we don't just divert these funds and come back home with nothing. It, it should be good news for us to engage our farmers. Farming should be one of the key things that we encourage in Ghana because we have very good arable land, especially in my constituency. There's a lot of land. We have a lot of land we can engage in cassava farming, which I think is so good around the Doklama area. And so, but I have not heard about any injection of such capital into this cassava farming around our area. I remember the Bojasi cassava farm that President Kufo seriously encouraged. What has come out of that? Are we still encouraging that? As the investment go to those exact areas, what are they producing? Are we getting the, the returns? For some of us, 
sitting outside. Those are the things we need to be monitoring, watching, and making sure that the money doesn't go elsewhere, but gives us the best result that we are expecting. Uh, how do we ensure that, I mean, farmers and SMEs take advantage of some of these opportunities? Because for me, this is even the first time I'm hearing this. Yeah, you see, so sometimes we need to do, I keep talking about policy. You don't dole out money to people just like that. They go and use for funerals and some other things. So if it is about plowing a hundred acre of land for somebody, get the tractor, come to the field, inspect it, make sure that it is plowed. If it is about supply of seed, make sure you supply the seed to the person, have a monetary system, make sure that it was planted. If it's about the, the, the weedy size that you have to give to the person, so in as much as possible, let's reduce the doling out of cash to this individual and make sure that we supply them all the things they need, monitor and make sure that the right things are done. For me, those are some of the things we can put in place and make sure that we don't continue to give our money and come back to count our loss any time, any day. So once we monitor these things very well and engage the right people in doing these things, it, it, it brings us a lot of dividends. But usually these things come and you have some party people go to line and write their names, the money is given to them as a loan. Oh, this, 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 is, this is by the EU. You think that that would be encouraged or that could be done? E EU doesn't come directly to dollar money, do they? They will definitely pass it to the Ministry of Agri or the particular agency responsible for whatever program they have. And these are Ghanaians. And most of these people are put there by politicians. So for me, if we can take away policies of all these things, did we not hear of the Ministry of Agri that uh, Honorable Akoto was headed, who was just running his map and at the end of the day, we don't see anything happening on the ground. What has happened out of all those several planting for food and job, uh, 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 what, what other policies, all those mantras we have heard from the Ministry of Agri, was it not EU sponsored and other uh, 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 Westerners sponsoring these programs before at the end of the day, we didn't see much. So it's about those driving the policy at the Ministry of Agri and the agencies through which these things come that we have to speak to and make sure that they do the right things. So that is my call that let's make sure that we press the right buttons, make sure the right people are involved, we get the right result out of it, and then we are good to go. Mm. I, I think uh, tie in to that one is the a story on page 16 of the Daily Graphic. It says that $24 million integrated rural development project launched. The Ministry of Local Government, Decentralization and Rural Development has launched the second phase of the Integrated Rural Development Project, IRDP. The project seeks to provide critical infrastructure and economic empowerment to 23 deprived districts across the country. The $24 million initiative spanning 2022 to 2027 is a partnership between the government and the OPEC Fund for International Development. The Sector Minister Dan Boche launched the initiative in Accra yesterday. Aside from providing infrastructure in the education and health sectors, the project also seeks to eradicate poverty and ensure a sustainable increase in the income level of rural communities through the provision of microcredit. The IRDP has four components made up of the provision of socio-economic infrastructure, the provision of credit to small-scale and medium enterprises, SMEs, outreach, sensitization and capacity building, and management and coordination. Under the project, OFID will provide a loan facility of $20 million, while the government and beneficiary district provide $800,000 and $3.2 million, respectively. The beneficiary district are Tema West, the Great Accra region, Efija Quabren, Quabren North, Setra Central, Offensu North, and Setra Afram Plains, all in the Asante region, and Okere, Equiapim South, and Ayenswano in the Eastern region. Others are Asen North and Ewutu Senya in the Central region, Isikado Keten in the Western region, Adaklu in the Volta region, Karaga in the Northern region, Binduri in the Upper East region, and Sunyai West and Wenchi in the Bono region. So, I mean, once this is coming in, you are still looking at, as you said, how well this can be implemented. So what, what sort of advice will you give in terms of how we can better implement this, this, this uh, uh, project? Yes, like I told you last week, my father is a farmer. He ever won the, best, the district best farmer. And you see, when some of these facilities come, uh, too much is wasted on workshops, on offices, on travels, on these. Instead of the thing that really benefiting the farmers, most of the officers responsible find cunning ways of 
spending this thing so that what goes back to the farmers is very little. So my point is that let us know that this is supposed to benefit us on the ground. The too much talking, the too much bureaucracy, that so many workshops that they organize, at the end of the day, do not go directly to affect the very purpose for which reason these monies have been released. On several occasions, we have heard, we have seen, we have experienced, we have known that monies have been given up for policies and for very critical areas of our life, especially about our grief. But at the end of the day, we don't get the results we need. Those who are giving the money are not really farmers on the ground. They just come and write people's names and they go away. Can you imagine that that district best farming policy that we have as a people, even now has been politicized, that even before they give you the best farmer, they would have to see whether you belong to a particular party or not. Can you imagine that this is not done based on meritocracy and that they just choose people in the way they are? So for me, it is time we are still police, uh, politics in all our dealing, especially when it comes to these critical areas of ours as a people. A Greek, a Greek, a Greek, which should be a very critical aspect of our thinking as a people, as Ghanaians. We are not in the Sahara. We are not in the desert. We are in a place where we have a lot of arable land that we can use this donor agency's fund to develop ourselves. Let us not continue to think about doing all this money to ourselves and finding canny ways of just spending the money. Let us get so. The so, so is it your suggestion that the focus of this integrated rural development project should be, uh, you know, towards developing agriculture? The farmers, yes, the farmers, the people at the grassroots who are targeting the poor. It should not be given to fatty apparatus. It should be given to the people who need it so that we can eradicate poverty, which is our focus and our goal. That should be our goal as people in governance. Nothing more, nothing else. It okay. is not about how much money we go and pile in our homes. Money is to be brought for uh, uh, cleaning our gutters, and one person will go and pile it in his house. Money is brought for free fertilizer. One person will take the fertilizer and go and sell and make money and come back that he wants to be president. These are the things we are talking about. Let the money go to the ground and affect the very people whose lives the people outside saw and want to improve and has brought us this fund. That is all okay. my plea to okay. ask Ghanaians. Let's turn to the Daily Guy newspaper now, and uh, let me take you to page six of the paper. It says, ECG sacks 11 top officials. The story is written by I.F. Joe Ewa Jr. from Kumasi. Now, the electricity company of Ghana has sacked 11 top executives for allegedly causing financial loss to the company the Daily Guide has uncovered. These top executives included treasury executives, senior IT assistants, assistant accounting officer, artisans, and customer service officers, among other senior staff. A reliable source in the ECG who demanded anonymity said the affected, um, affected top executives indulged in various illegal activities that adversely affected the coffers of the ECG. Their offenses included tampering or falsification of records, tampering of payment data, unauthorized payment and transfers and others which caused financial loss to the ECG. Some of the sacked officials were also found culpable of vacating their post without permission from their superiors or management of the ECG. The affected staff were stationed in the various regions of the country until they were given their sack letters, which indicated that their, service, their services were no longer needed. Quote, as of August 2023, 11 top executives of the ECG from various regions have been sacked by management for causing financial loss to the company, the source said. Um, okay, 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 okay. So th this is it. I mean, I don't read anywhere in the story that they've been taken to court. Should it end there by just, uh, with just their sacks? It's interesting the way we behave in this country called Ghana. There are several things that we suffer from and people are just asked to leave and that is all. Like you heard uh, our foreign affairs minister going to run and make a media show. If you know you have overstayed, uh, if, you are, if you've been here for one year, don't come back to office on Monday and that's all. And people would ask, are we serious as a people? Is that how best practices are supposed to be experienced in a country, in a, a setup, no. So this ECG office, they, they don't come to work. They have involved themselves in this and that, and that is all, and they be sacked. Whether they be taken through due process, whether it's one of their policies in the company, 
say that once this happens, this is what you do. We, we are not too sure about. But the real thing is the effect we are experiencing on the ground as people. You know, ECG is responsible for uh, making sure that wheat are under their lines are also cleared anytime, any day. How often do they do these things? The last time on the Rosa Highway and the ECG, my, my guys in Putama, you know, Putama is my village. They have to organize themselves under the auspices of the assembly member to go and clear the roadside themselves. These are monies that government has already budgeted for, for highway and for ECG to be clearing the size of the road and under our electricity lines. But at the end of the day, you don't see these things happening. But it will interest you to know that somebody sitting in the office who cooks some voucher, pays some ghost company, they go back and share the money, and their life goes on. These are the kind of things we experience in the country as Ghana, and then people just in the office, they will just hear that uh, uh, he's been sad. Not long, too long ago, we heard that they, they asked that their MD himself should be fired. I don't know what has come out of that. So now maybe the MD wants to show that he's doing something and he's going to relieve some people, whether through due process or just uh, 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 at his own whims and caprices, then he decided to lay off people. We are not too sure about that. But I'm sure that some of these things we should be serious about them, not just putting up show, but making sure that people are sanctioned through due process, and then other people would learn a lesson and take a cue from it, and next time sit up and do what they have to do right for us to blow as a country, Ghana. Mm. All right. Um, uh, on the page nine of the same paper, it says electricity tariff increases by 4.22% in September 1. Now, the Public Utilities Regulatory Commission will implement 4.22% increase in electricity tariffs for all non-lifeline residential customers starting September 1, 2023. A statement issued by the PRC and signed by Executive Secretary Dr. Ishmael Aka said the decision comes after a review of the third quarter of 2023 by the company to ensure the real value of the cost of providing utility services is upheld. Quote, the commission after extensive deliberations and analysis has approved a non-increment or change in end-user electricity tariff for lifeline consumers or customers, industrial customers and non-residential customers, um, hairdressing saloons, barbering shops, chop bars, tailoring and dressing making shops, coat stores and other small and medium scale businesses, effective September 1, 2023. The commission, however, approved a 4.22% increase across board in the average end user electricity tariff for non-lifeline residential customers, it said. Your thought on this? I, I, the same thoughts you have. Why this time? Why under these excruciating economic conditions? Uh, has what salaries been tampered with some way somehow? Or they think that as the usual magicians we are, we should find a way of paying irrespective of whatever situation we are in. These are some of the things that bring corruption in the offices because of course, if my salary remains the same, you continue to increase electricity and water tariffs and you expect me to pay my school fees and other things remain the same or even increase by the day. And then my uh, poor increases, inflation increases. What you buy today, tomorrow, it will be times two or times like 50% over. And you expect the person to remain the same. How would it happen? And so for me, it's like leadership is not seeing the kind of pressure that is on us as Ghanaians. And they keep asking. Well, 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 well but Mr. Lukuto, uh, I mean, the PRC is responsibility is to regulate, you know, the utilities and, and how they set their tariffs. It is another person's job to look at how, whether your salaries will be increased or not. So are we being fair if we tie in what the PRC is doing to whether our salaries remain the same or increased? Oh, PR, uh, PURC is not the one who is responsible for increasing our salaries. But my question is, how do we pay? So you see, uh, PURC's business is not how I pay though, but I'm saying that under normal circumstances, if some of these things are increased, government who is who has oversight responsibility over even the PURC and me should be thinking about how the ordinary Ghanaian is going to take it and how his way to uh, his livelihood is going to be affected by these increases. So that if there's something they can do to poor workers, they should also do to us. That's all my point. I will not fault PURC for increasing this rate because, of course, they also have to be in business, not necessarily making profit, but making sure that they even break even or keep our lights on every time, every day, or making sure that water runs through our taps. But at the end of the day, it is responsibility of government 
to make sure that we are able to make do our responsibility of paying these bills. So for me, yes, PURC has increased. But what is government looking at? What is government trying to do to ameliorate our uh, suffering and also cause us to be able to match and then get these things underway? For me, that is the anger I'm looking at it from. I will not fault PURC for increasing it. Uh, not at all. It is our government making sure that salaries are increased to, to match these things and so that people, people can live uh, uh, well as workers in the country. That's all I'm looking at. Mm. Now, um, Duca opens workshop for small scale miners. This is the first phase, and this story is written by Emmanuel Opoku from Takwa. Now, the first phase of a pilot training workshop for district mining committees and selected small scale miners has been opened in Takwa in the Western region. The training program, which will be carried out in mining communities across the country, is a significant step forward in Ghana's ongoing attempt to formalize the artisanal and small scale mining sector. Now, opening the training section, Deputy Minister for Land and Natural Resources, George Merikuduka, praised the World Bank Group for, finance, for financial and technical assistance that allowed the government to give capacity building training. Mr. Duka, who is also the Member of Parliament for Takwa, stated that responsible mining is critical to the country's development. Quote, let us work together to create an enabling environment where responsible mining practices can thrive. By formalizing the sector, we can mitigate the negative impact of illegal mining activities and create a more sustainable and inclusive industry. Though through building the capacity as, uh, of the district mining committees and Ghana National Association of Small Scale Miners, the government aims to ensure that sustainable and best mining practices are upheld, he explained. Um, isn't this the way to go? Train them on how to mine. But after training, what must we do to ensure that, in fact, all that we have trained them on are being done? That is a good question you have asked. It's not just about the training. This is not the first time we've heard about uh, community mining uh, being instituted. I think as far back as 2021 or so, we have continued to hear about these things. And the major mining towns, Takwa, his, his, his base, Bogatanga, Oda, and I think Asankragua and some, uh, and some other place. They are the top five uh, communities that uh, this small scale mining is very right. And so for me, sometimes our politicians come up with policies, very good ones, of course, but uh, you look back and the results you get sometimes just tell you that these are things they just bring to, to, to make show to the cameras and to the uh, media houses and to Ghanaians. At the end of the day, or behind the scenes, what happens, uh, we all see the effect of it. Has there been any improvement in the water bodies that uh, we have that have been badly affected by this calamity and other uh, uh, activities that go on in the river bodies? So, in as much as we press the right buttons, we go by, uh, back behind the scenes and do very worse things. Uh, these ministers of state, we know this disease, in most of these districts, we are aware, are directly involved in some of these galancy things. Uh, we are aware that Tehidi is distilling some chiefs who have also given our land or are complicit in this galancy business. And so for me, these are good policies uh, that are uh, supported by the Westerners to put us on the right track. But whether it's only the goal they are looking for, we are not too sure. We are aware that these small scale miners and the galanciers produce over 60% of the gold that we get in Ghana. And so if that is that much that they produce, are we mm. sure we are pressing the right buttons on the ground to make okay. sure that the right thing? So for me, it's not just the show, it's not just the policy, it's not just for the camera, but it should be such that the real effect is felt on the ground. Okay. Once our water okay. bodies don't get clearer by the day, it means that we are not doing anything. We are just having a talk show. So until we see clarity, until the stability level in our, our waters begin to be better, we can't say that we are getting anywhere close. This issue has been with us for so many years, and we keep dancing around it. People come to make sure, and at the end of the day, nothing really happens. Let us make sure that the right effect that we are looking for, the result we are looking for, we get it out okay. of this policy. All right. Thank you very much. Maxwell Lukoto, uh, he is uh, the NDC's parliamentary candidate for South Town. And this segment was brought to us by Endpoint Homeopathic Clinic, and they are offering free prostate screening and female uh, fertility screening, which is also free. Uh, you, you can locate them in Accra, Spintex, opposite cell signboard, 
Kumasi Kronum Abon here behind Angel Educational Complex. Um, in Takade, they are Tanaja Estate in Te Te Tema in Community 22, Techiman. You can locate them in Hanswa. In Nzema, you can locate them in Esiama. Call them on 0244-867068 or 0274-234321. Endpoint Homeopathic Clinic, the end to chronic diseases. We'll take a quick break. When we return, Muftao and Nabila Abdullah will be joining us with latest from the World of Sports. Stay with us. Good morning, let's do sports now on the AM show. I am Muftao Nabila Athletics, Bar Fuseni, and uh, he says that it was a difficult but necessary decision to withdraw the team from the competition. Very tough to take, but it was very tough and very necessary uh, for the sake of the athletes' health. Now, the World Athletics is safeguarding the interests and welfare of athletes. So, we don't want to aggravate the situation. Um, we all saw what happened. Joe Paul even came out from the from the curve, leading no less an athlete like the grad from Canada um, until the injury set in, and uh, we we're, were devastated. Uh, but we we're also hoping that we could do something before the Friday. Uh, so we took the necessary step by taking them to a medical center for real medical test and examination. When the results came out, it was just too it was just it was not too good. And we didn't want to risk the career of the athlete. We know we have the competition coming on next year, the African Games and the Olympic Games in Paris. And we need this athlete at that time. So we took that painful decision when necessary to withdraw them, to let them start treatment immediately. And let me use this opportunity to thank the Honorable Minister of Defense Force, Honorable Yusuf, for prompt action, taking immediate action, and seeing today that these athletes get the needed financial support to commence treatment immediately. I am an athlete. I've been in athletics for the past 30 years. This is my first time seeing a minister coming now so boldly and so quickly to address such situation. We can only say, Honorable Minister, we are so grateful. And on behalf of Ghana Athletics and my own behalf, we thank you. We thank your deputy and to thank the President of the Republic for coming into the, to the aid of these athletes, for giving them $8,000 to start treatment. And again, not only that, they should go and treat themselves if there's any additional expenses. They can submit their receipt for refunds. I mean, I'm short of words. The athletes are so grateful to the Honorable Minister and the Ministries. And let me tell Ghana that since Honorable Minister came to the office, his support for Ghana athletes has no win. The support of Ghana athletes is very much appreciated. Now, let's hear from the Deputy Minister of Youth and Sports, um, Evans Bubio Osei, who is with the team, but we understand is flying back to Ghana today because of the Super Delegates Congress that will be happening this weekend. He said that the ministry decided to support the athletes so that they can take care of their medical bills. I believe if they had gotten the opportunity to compete, they would have qualified for the finals or the semi-finals. So it's a sad news that has hit Ghana. So on our part, at the ministry, I have had some discussions with my minister, my boss, whom I am representing, and that the ministry on behalf of the government is going to support them to go through treatment. I'm told they will be leaving back to the states. Both of them, they live in the state and they are the students who are running for Ghana. And they come, they go for competition. 
in the old Ghana, Ghana's pride high. So it's very sad news for us. And uh, I have encouraged them to put this one behind them. At least they have an opportunity come next year to compete for qualification to uh, Paris 2024. Thank God, Accra Games Athletics is going to be qualified to Paris 2024 Olympic Games in Paris. So the ministry on behalf of the government has supported them with eight thousand dollars to both of them to go back to go through treatment quickly in the state so that come March next year they will be fit to participate in the Accra Games. And this year's World Athletics Championships is a competition that has been filled with many storylines. One of such storylines is Nia Ali, the wife of Andre de Grasse. And uh, Nia Ali had spoken about how after giving birth, she's become extremely fast uh, when it comes to racing. Her husband, de Grasse, a specialist in the 200 meters, a former Olympic champion, says that um, he's been training with his wife and that's why she's been able to improve on her speed. He also asked uh, how they are able to uh, combine family, that is taking care of their kids and still chasing their careers of being some of the best athletes in the world. Um, I mean, I think we just do a good job of supporting each other. Um, we train together, so we push one another. Um, so I mean, like, that's what it's all about. I talk to each other all the time. We go out there and in your best, um, so that's all that matters to her. Like, you know, USA, making the team, and then when you come to the championship, just bring, bring your A game. So she does a good job of that. Uh, of not you know, letting the pressure get to your head and just going out there and having fun. In 2019, I saw her win the title, and then in 2022, she fell, and then she's come back stronger. She's running her fastest times at her oldest. I mean, how do you explain that? <laughs> I mean, she's just strong. Uh, she's mentally strong. Uh, this year, she's physically a lot more fit than previous years. So uh, her training has been going well. And of course, you, you know, you don't get injured or anything like that. The training is just going well. It brings a lot of confidence in her. So she's just been doing her thing. And I feel like she has a great shot of contending for a medal. Uh, and, and for yourself, um, you're the Olympic champion. Um, in Oregon, didn't exactly go according to plan. But how, how are you feeling uh, this year? Yeah, I'm feeling better. Uh, I'm coming back from my injury. So for me, it's just taking it one day at a time, one round at a time. Um, I know I'm going to have to bring my best um, you know, tomorrow. So I'm going to go out there and try to just leave it all out there and you know, try to qualify for the finals and then just give, it, give, it, give it all I got after that. And uh, ultimately, I mean, for you, at this point in your career, you've won, you've won quite a lot. When it gets to this point in your career, what's always going to your mind? Are you thinking about what's next or are you still just like taking it one day at a time? Yeah, I mean, for me, it's always you know, kind of what, what's next. Uh, what's, what are my goals? I want to accomplish a lot more in the 100 meters. Uh, 200 meters, I reached my goals when I lifted and breaking the national record. But um, you know, for me, uh, my goal is now just to get better in 100 meters, get faster in 100 meters so I can reach. The action will continue today in Budapest, especially in the women's 200 meters, where world champion Shakari uh, Richardson is coming up against Sharika Jackson again, and also favor of Philly, Jose Marie Thaliu is also in there in the case of the, uh, in the semi-final of the World Athletics Championships. And what it means is that the first three automatic qualifiers makes it to the final. So uh, Talu, Sh uh, Sharuka Jackson, Sh Shakari Richardson, Favor of Philly uh, are all in there seeking to qualify to the final of the World uh, Athletics Championship 200 meters for women. Let's wrap up with some football stories where Vice President of the Ghana Football Association, Mark Addo, says that um, the vision of the football governing body is to ensure that Ghana is one of the topmost countries when it comes to football in the continent. Yeah. What should Ghanaians expect in the next four years? We, should, we can only go higher from a standpoint that we, we want the, our national teams to be strong. We want to be a powerhouse in Africa and the world. And so a lot of resources will go into developing our coaches and developing our teams to that level. Our local league still needs a lot of help. 
um, in terms of uh, making a product that people can go and watch like we used to. Uh, our, our referees have to be, we have to strengthen their capability as well so that the games are, are officiated fair and clean you know, in a very professional way. Uh, one of the efforts is to continue engagement with government for government support because we can't do it all. There's a lot of tremendous amount of resources that will require at these levels, especially if we want our national teams to be top in the world. We have to put a lot of resources at our levels like other countries are doing. And that's a result that you know that you see in Senegal and Morocco and all these places because they put an amount of, amount of resources. And if we don't do it, trust me, you will be sitting here one day and you see countries like Tanzania and all these people, you know, just raising buyers because we have not invested in, in those areas. This is our wrap-up sports here on the AM show with me, Mufta Nabila Abla. Head on to myjoyonline.com and read some more sports stories. The show continues right after this. All right, so welcome to the AF show, and it's time for us to uh, go into the big stories for today. So my guest, Mutala Mohammed, uh, is Honorable Member of Parliament for Tamale Central, and also the Honorable Davis Ansel Poku MP for Mpraya, so they call him OPK. All right, good morning, gentlemen, and welcome. Good morning. Only that you should add that the only MP who commanded the entire majority to walk out of Parliament. That's, that's him, man. Eh? Get on, let's get on. <laughs> that's that's, that's, that's Mutala <laughs> why, why did he say they should get out? He's a very powerful man. Okay. Get out. And majority, like, he, they all followed him sheepishly. <laughs> he, followed, and he was in front and they were following him. You know when you see ducks? Yeah. You know ducks when they are moving? Yeah. For ducks, the, 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 the little ones are in front. Yeah. Uh -huh. And their yeah. mother is following. Yeah. You know? That's Any other animal, that was what happened. So <laughs> picture ducks moving out of the chamber. <laughs> anyway, very interesting here. Yeah. But he's a uh, nice guy, actually. He is. Oh, yeah, OPK, OPK. I, I know him as far back as UCC. Mm -hmm. uh, he didn't know me much because I was, you know, yeah. uh, on the ground. But mm -hmm. because he was like the president of an association and I was a presenter, you know, it's like president and a journalist. The president yeah. may not know the journalist, but the yeah. journalist will know the president. So. <laughs> I, dis I disagree with a lot of things about him. One thing I respect <sighs> independent minded, he takes his position. Regardless of the consequences. Right. I mean, he's a supporter of Alan. Looks at like the time, I'm, at on the, time, I'm on the table. He's, he's this a supporter morning. of Alan at a time when many MPs wanted Alan, but they could not because, you know, you do so, you risk even, you know, mm. not getting any support from this government. He, he was very firm, and I respect him for that. Okay. Even All though right. I disagree with him, the candidate he's supporting, and any other candidate can't insulate themselves from the mess that is created by the incompetence. But He's still very firm in his thoughts. Uh, All yeah. right. Okay. Let, let's move on and, and, and look at the issues. Now, yeah. um, uh, this week, one of the major issues is the Ghana um, GMPC Gensa Energy deal that the um, um, com Parliamentary Committee on Mines and Energy came out to the finding. The Ghana Gas Senior Staff Association have come out to say that the findings can never be accurate and that there's much more that they have to do. The minority side on the committee say, no, they cannot associate with the findings of the committee. Uh, there's been a lot of talk about how this deal is going to really near to the um, a disadvantage of the country. Uh, let, let's start with it and see how we can go about it. Let, let me start with you. Um, okay, I'll start with you. No, he can't, he can't tell you to start with No, 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 he no, didn't. No, he didn't. No, no, no the, reason why, the reason why I'm going to... No, I no, no, no. The reason why no, I'm going to... With no, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Huh? You know the reason I'm going to start uh -huh. with you uh -huh. is that you've had enough time to, to relax. I mean, we've been with you for some time. <laughs> he just came. So let me start with you. Um, how do we go about this deal that the industry people are saying that you cannot offer our gas infrastructure to a private company, especially when it's a foreign company? 
well, as to even whether Parliament took the decision. I think that as a member of the minority, of course, I'm not a member of the Committee for Mines and Energy. Let me be very clear. The NDC didn't participate in the decision that occasioned the position taken by the committee. How committees of Parliament work, you have a chairman of the committee who is a member of the NPP, a member of the majority, in the person of Honorable Atacha. The NDC raised certain issues, and the NDC was suspecting that the report would have incorporated some of the issues raised by the NDC. Unfortunately, they were not. So if people here, and I listened to your station when the story was broke, and then the position was that the Committee of Parliament, mm -hmm. which of course include both NDC and, and MPP, took the decision they took. And which Imani, I remember you yeah. interviewed uh, my good friend Frank Franklin Kujo. Kujo. Franklin indeed had strong words for the Committee of Parliament. So anybody listening to Franklin or listening to your news would presume that the NDC also participated in taking the decision they took. The NDC never did. As a matter of fact, you had two state institutions, the Ghana Gas and Ghana uh, and, and, uh, GMPC. GMPC. Now, one has the responsibility of distributing, and one has the responsibility of sales. Now, if one has a responsibility of distributing, and one has a responsibility of sales, a contract that is entered into for the purposes of doing both must not be signed by just one. Because if my responsibility, as mandated by law, is to distribute, why would I be engaged in signing a contract that has something to do with sales? So several issues. So if it was just an NDC position, perhaps people would have said that the NDC, once again, is doing politics. But this is a position that is taken by another independent body, and they have problems with it. Look, transparent governance and accountable governance is sine qua non to the success of our democracy. And any time issues like that come up and people raise them, let it not be assumed that people do so for the purposes of political expediency. People do so, so, so that right things could be done. We are talking about money here. Why would you even have a private entity to do that when there is a state institution that has the capacity to do that? It simply doesn't make sense. And it isn't that that state institution doesn't, has only the capacity, but they have the experience. They have been engaged. And if you talk about perfection, perfection leads to re the reduction of cost. Because once you, you, are perf you perfect a job you do, because you have the experience, you have engaged in it for a very, very long time. You reduce the time you spend in doing that. You also, you also talk about quality of work that is to be done, and most importantly, the cost that the state would have incurred in doing so. If there is any profit that is to be made by a private entity, why can't we prevent that if the state can do that and the profit becomes the profit of the state? I don't subscribe to the argument that when you have private entities that indeed take over, defunct state institutions, they perform well, is because of the mindset. It's because of the mindset. If, in some instance, in <coughs> instances, you have a state institution, a private entity took it, maybe the only people they will change will be management, but the entirety of the working staff will be the same people who are engaged in it, and they will begin to make some profit. I think that we need to take a second look at that. It means that those management who run such state institutions around do that deliberately. That cliche, Abensika. Mm -hmm. They're also saying that Abensika in Dinukwa. Mm -hmm. Because if you spend Abensika Kwa, you'd have a day of accountability. And I think that these are some of the issues. Mm -hmm. If this government is a listening government, I think that they need to listen to the concerns raised by the NDC and the concerns raised by other civil society organizations in the matter of this. Mm -hmm. It simply doesn't make sense. Um, OPG, yeah. yesterday I spoke with Ben Boache and uh, someone from Ghana Gas. And the understanding I got was that. I mean, Ghana Gas already has the pipelines leading to the FPSO to bring gas, uh, you know, onshore, and also have built the pipelines from uh, where they are the in Sanzule. Uh, I mean, uh, Atuabo to Pristia, to the Gensa site, and so once they are already having the pipelines, and the estate company, you don't give the same thing to a private entity to do it. Because now I understand the private company will now construct a pipeline to the FPSO to bring gas onshore. Why do we do that when already there's a state company that is capable of doing it? Well, um, 
Well, let me say a very good morning to our viewers. And also to say that, I mean, um, this issue has been on the radar for a while. I mean, um, at a point we saw some misunderstanding between the Minister of Energy now and even the uh, Chief Executive at the point. I mean, um, I think the back and forth is unnecessary, especially now that the Parliamentary Select Committee have sat on the matter uh, for 11 months, investigated the matter, and a report is finally out. I mean, a committee of parliament uh, will still work, even if a session of its members decides to boycott. I mean, uh, parliamentary work will still go on. But that said, I mean, um, yes, Ghana Gas may have the capacity to deliver. But um, looking at the gas that has been fled into the system, if it turns out that you still need um, a private entity to come on board to augment whatever Ghana Cars is doing, for me, um, I believe that um, you, you cannot conclude that uh, probably maybe it's duplication of uh, work or... or at, I, a, at a time when Ghana Gas has already started constructing a second plant to take care of those well, gases they, that they, have been fled. They are now constructing, I'm, I'm, uh, somewhere last year, mm -hmm. this, this year, Ghana Gas signed a deal with somebody, like another company, um, on, on this very subject. Um, that said, um, I strongly believe that uh, the presidency ought to come into this matter. This is not a subject because these are um, disagreements between entities that are within the domain of the executive. <coughs> GMPC on one hand, Ministry of Energy on the other side, there's Ghana Gas and all of that. The back and forth for me is not necessary. Uh, because I mean, I, I, I mean, Ghana Gas, GMPC, and, and, and the Ministry of Energy, they mean well for the nation. They're all looking at the possible means that will work well for our country, Ghana. And so um, I would not want to um, uh, apportion blame at this point, um, despite the fact that a parliamentary committee has a report out that, that claims that the deal is clean and that um, it's not going to cause any loss to the state. But, but that report has been challenged. By? By, I mean, people in the, in the, in the industry, and then even a minority on the committee. Well, a minor, the, minority, uh, the minority can boycott committee meetings, mm -hmm. but it does not stop committee meetings from going on. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, they can boycott uh, parliament, but parliament will not cease to operate especially when you form your, your quorum <laughs> to sit and work. Parliament is to still go, you understand? So the minority could have decided to have boycotted. I mean, that's their own decision. It's within their domain to do that. But that does not prevent the committee from going ahead to do its work. Yes, once the report is out, people can critique the report. But it does not mean that that 11 months of investigation did not happen. But, but if you get to know that the company, Jensa, yes. has not been given authorization by the PRC to run pipelines, yes. how would you react to this? That a company that has been given the permission by GMPC mm -hmm. to construct pipelines and to use it to rent the state and own it after 16 years mm. is not mandated to run pipelines in this country. How will, re will you react to it? Well, th those, are, th those may be administrative uh, challenges to the whole um, um, agreement. And... Um, I expect I expect that due diligence should should take place. Um, I, I'm not too sure um, how uh, uh, this thing ends up affecting the entire deal. Um, but like I mentioned, I think that the the, the government, uh, through the office of the president, must call for a meeting to bring these matters to finality. I mean, contracts have been signed. Um, we need to look at. Uh, the cost of abrogating certain contracts. Um, we need to look at um, a, a government that believes in the private sector. I mean, uh, giving the private sector the opportunity to operate and to work in our country. Um, you weigh all those uh, 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 options and, and take a decision. It has to be very definite. I mean, Ghana Gas is not operating 
for the country Nigeria. He's operating for Ghana. I mean, same as JMPC, same as Minister of Energy. And even if, if, if the president likes, they can even bring in parliament to sit on this subject so that we, we, we bring finality to the matter. Interesting. Um, uh, let me come you to see, you. The on. conduct of the chairman of the committee mm -hmm. is completely and appallingly bizarre. The speaker, as a matter of fact, Honorable OPK, it is not about the fact that, you know, anybody thinks that the state institutions mandated with the responsibility to perform some of the functions that the minority and civil society organizations are talking about are not doing their work, but they are being prevented from doing what they are supposed to do. And I don't know whether we can trust this government when it comes to some of these energy deals. You remember, Mary, mm -hmm. when the MPP, indeed as a political party, one of the reasons why they came to power was the palpable lies they told about the Ameri and what the NDC did. When they got the opportunity, what did they do? They sat at the Flagstaff House and criminal, criminally, and I say this with all the seriousness, I did over $800 million to the Ameri renegotiation. It took the intervention and the vigilance of the M NDC minority in Parliament mm -hmm. to identify that $800 million, not $8 million, not $800 million cities, $800 million. Imagine the number of schools it, it could build hospitals. If the minority was not vigilant, some in but the country that under, under, under Mr. Jacon was investigated. I'm saying that the Ameri renegotiation, and okay. Jacon, your program confirmed that, mm -hmm. that there were indeed some members from the MP, he mentioned Atacha, who always concerns about some of those things and that they ought to. If the NDC minority was not vigilant, this thing would have gone to someone would have been criminally pocketing $800 million. And the thing happened at the Flagstaff House. Now, on this matter, Mr. Speaker actually referred the matter again to a joint committee of mines and energy and finance. That's what the Speaker did. Because it is of tremendous concern to everybody. I, and, and like I told you, he is concerned about this just like any of us. Referred it to a joint committee of mines and energy and finance. What occasion the rush mm -hmm. by the, the chairman of the Mines and, and Energy Committee. Oh, so it means that uh, before the, the joint committee could sit on it. Yeah, he came out with this, with this oh, report. The okay. speaker actually referred it. Like, look, the minority raised concerns about some of this. And if, mind you, the reason why the minority raised concerns about them, you know, have to do with one, the capacity, capacity to do that, two, legality, because like you've indicated, the PURC has not given them the authorization to yeah. do the things they want to do. Anybody can go to court. And most importantly, the cost, the financing. Will it be cost beneficial to this country or not? And I believe that that was the reason why in the wisdom of the speaker, he then referred the thing again to a joint committee. If there was a committee that did a particular work, mines and energy, and because of some of these nagging issues that came up, the speaker decided that, look, let's involve the the finance committee in the matter. The finance committee, you have equal numbers, and the chairman of the finance committee is an MPP member, mm. you know. So let's have this so that we can look at it holistically. Just out of nowhere, you came out with this report. I think that, frankly speaking, it is just something is, is mechia. Mm. Mm. All you know, they may have justification for doing that, but what prevents you from allowing the joint committee to sit in that matter? And I think by now, what Honorable Atachan should be doing, should be reaching out to the chairman of the finance committee Honorable uh, uh, yeah, Kweku You should be reaching out to them, reaching out to the ranking of the finance committee, in this case, Honorable Adongo. We mean well for this country, but we are tremendously concerned. You see, this is not the first instance or the first thing, time that we have some of this. Thing. You remember the, the testing, the antigen test at the, at, the, at the airport, when the Minister for Health himself appeared before Appointment Committee of Parliament said that they operated illegally. One, they didn't have a license, mm -hmm. and that he didn't know about the operation. Now, if you want to allow some of these things, illegalities to be perpetrated, permeating through the fabrics of our state institutions, one, it is not only being, you know, not transparent, it is undermining state institutions. Because I believe that, strongly, the Ghana gas, in this case, will feel undermined. Mm -hmm. What we are supposed to be doing Do by it. law, you are giving it to a, private, it to a entity, private entity, which is even a foreign yeah. company. One, they don't, we don't even know whether they have the capacity mm -hmm. to do that because we have the capacity, we have the experience. We build the pipelines. That foreign company didn't build the pipelines. Mm -hmm. That foreign company is coming to take advantage of several years of, of hard work and investment that we have. Someone should tell us what the interest is. If the point was that 
Ghana Gas doesn't have the capacity to do that. Ghana Gas doesn't have the money to build the pipelines. This Jensen company is going to build the pipeline. They have the capacity exclusively mm -hmm. to do that. There would have been some justification. Mm -hmm. But you can't tell me that there is any justification in what they are going to do when you have a state institution that has the capacity to do so. I think that, and I agree with you, it is not just the president calling parliament. They should allow the joint committee, committees of mines and energy and finance committee to look at it thoroughly. At the end of the day, we may not have some of these problems happening. I am particularly hurt, and I will raise this issue. I watch a video, and if I, I want to establish this before I file the question in Parliament, where a young lady reporting that one of the castles, I don't know whether in, in, in Western region, one of the slave dungeons, which is a reminder of the barbarism of the so-called colonial masters mm -hmm. on us. They are turning a particular facility, an old dungeon, which was used to keep slaves as a hotel. And it's, it is being managed by a white man who is a descendant of those slave masters. Mm -hmm. I mean, when I saw it, I got extremely appalled. I had to save that video because I just don't want to file the question. It's possible that it may not be true on social media, but if it is true, that would be extremely hurting to all of us. We, we, we must help ensure that our institutions have the capacity to do some of these things. We must ensure by actions like this, by government undermines those institutions. It siphons out the little confidence they have in them to be independent, mm -hmm. and it denies us our independence financially, because if you have a private entity that does that, they come with their expertise, they pay them with fat amount of monies. They get their profit. They, they, they take the profit out. Every private entity has one objective. Minimize cost and maximize profit. But state institutions are not only working to minimize cost and also to maximize profit, but they are working to ensure that there is stability within our country and ensure that we reap the benefit for the people of this country. And I think the president ought to listen to this. Okay. The, the would, would, ought to listen. would you have had a different stance yeah. if it was a build, own, operate, and transfer? If it was a build, own, operate, and transfer, that is when you don't have the capacity to do that. I've always been saying that, look, if you have Accra, for example, vehicles, extreme difficulty. If we get a company that will come and build the commute systems or commuter systems, trains within the cities, let's say Accra, Kumasi, and within the inner cities. If we don't have the money to do so, what I know Tunisia, I think Algeria, and some parts of Ethiopia they did, they have this built own and transfer. Mm -hmm. And the, the, those who built the projects, the same project is the collateral. So you, you don't need to look for money. Okay. The project itself is collateral. Mm -hmm. They come and build it, run it for let's say 25 years, yes. then run it with the state for 10 years or 15 years. And, and then after it. that it becomes the state property. Mm -hmm. And then they will be providing some, if you like, services, support. support for it. What is preventing us from doing so? If government is going in to do things like that, I will be more than million, 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 million percent supporting that. But where we have the capacity to do the very things, when indeed we have actually started doing something like that, if the pipelines were, have been laid, that is almost 80% of the work being done mm. because the transmission would have to be done through the pipelines. Pipes, yes. The people who lead the pipelines have accumulated a lot of experience. Mm -hmm. They can do that. Why do we then give it to a private entity when the state has the capacity to do so? And that's why I made the point earlier. And I want to emphasize that such actions, reckless as they are, they undermine state institutions. They deny state institutions the, the ability to build capacity so that they can be independent. So that, unfortunately, actions like that makes us completely subservient mm. to people at the expense of the benefit that the state would have given mm. us as a result. Uh, honorable, uh, in, in 2018, yeah. I was in South Africa. We went to Transnet, and Transnet is the uh, South African uh, company that runs their bill system. It runs mm. their port, it runs their pipelines, and everything. So all of these things are for the state, and it's being run by a state institution. Mm. Why are we then choosing to give ours to a private entity? And it's not even build, operate, and transfer. We're using it for 16 years. After 16 years, it becomes the property of, of, of Jensa. Why, why that decision? 
Well, uh, you see, I, I, I don't want to sound judgmental, mm. um, especially uh, from the side that I'm coming. I, 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 I largely uh, believe that uh, this issue has to do with uh, several interests at play. Certainly, I'm not too sure GMPC would have given this contract to uh, Gensa if it did not see value for money. Same way, the argument being advanced by Ghana Gas and his senior staff also makes a lot of sense. And that is why I've sat on this platform to say that all of these institutions are being managed by the executive. There's a ministry that is responsible for GMPC and Ghana Gas. I mean, they need to sit down and try and trash issues out. If already they've signed a deal with Gensa and they feel that it's going to cause financial loss to the state, or there's a, a, a portion was the, where... Was the deal sanctioned by Parliament? Because this is an international entity, which definitely you need Parliament. Well, I, I, well, they use the Gensa Ghana Limited. Gensa Ghana, yeah. I know. Uh -huh. Gensa Ghana. Gensa Ghana. Yes. So, That's so, one smart way. Exactly. So, yeah. so it's, 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 a, it's a foreign company, but their arm um, in Ghana is the one, you know, doing this. Yeah. So for, for me, I mean, I, I really, if you've seen my uh, uh, commentary on this, I'm trying to tread cautiously because um, I know that all these parties mean well for Ghana. No, some do not. No, I mean, uh, I mean you Jansa cannot blame. Certainly, Jansa certainly you cannot blame well for themselves, their profit. I'm and saying they will that, choose their profit. I, I, Ghana well, I'm referring to all the state institutions involved, um, GMPC, Ghana, Ghana Gas. Ghana doesn't think that way. Well, of course, that's what I'm saying, that there's a need for them to sit down and trash issues out. I mean, for 11 months, this matter has been running, and, and we need to bring uh, this, this. I mean, it, every day is in the news, and people even it creates the impression that there's some corrupt practices going on there, and somebody's interest is being served. It is unnecessary. The Ministry of Energy should sit this to giant companies down and trash issues out. Mm. That's for me. I mean, we, can also, we, can, we cannot also sit on this program and rule out the private sector's involvement in our energy industry. I mean, right from uh, 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 the oil industry, mm. we've had private companies participate in it. I mean, yeah. they've been very active in it. So uh, let, us not, let us not single out Gensa and create the impression that Gensa is coming to... Um, we, we need to also understand the logic behind GMPC's award of this contract to Gensa. But, but does, it, does, it, does it make a um, logical conclusion to you yeah. that we have a state entity that can run these pipes? Yes. And we are saying that a foreign company should come and build it and own it. It's, it's not like after a certain number of years it will come back to the state. It is the foreign company's business. And this is a critical infrastructure that they can decide to determine when a certain entity gets gas or not. Because it's a private business. I agree. I so agree why, with you. Why, I why, mean, why that decision? Then? It doesn't really add up. For me, it doesn't really add up. But I'm saying that I, I don't have the full fact. We don't have the full contract to, to, to know what really Gensa is bringing on board. I mean, okay, may, may, maybe I share with you the findings of the committee and, and probably... Well, the 11 points. The, the 11 points, yeah. Well, well I've, I've, seen, I've seen the 11 mm -hmm. points, mm -hmm. but I, I, still think, I still think that, um, uh, I mean, getting onto the, the, the drawing table, I mean, the, 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 I know Napo, Napo can easily sit on this matter and... and, and, and but but if Napo is undermined, I mean, let's, let's, sometimes let's stop this. The gentleman who is appointed as the Minister for Finance, oh, sorry, for Energy, mm -hmm. clothed with the authority to supervise the dealings and the activities of some of these agencies. Sometimes they don't even report to him. He knows that. Look, lack of synergy. They don't report to the minister. I mean, we hear a lot of stuff. You see, lack of, lack of synergy, or if you like, the interlinkages. Mm. I mean, in, in, in planning, we call them very essential linkages that ought to exist between and among ministries and agencies. Unfortunately, that not happened. I'll give an example. When I was the Deputy Minister for Trade and Industries, then I was also a member of the Environment Committee of Parliament. And I remember we had a workshop. The Minister of Environment brought in a project. When they brought it in, I realized that in the Ministry of Trade, we had a similar thing. Okay. So I raised questions. 
if we have spent so much money at a particular ministry doing something, why do you think that we should do the same here? And, and when I raised the questions, unfortunately, the Minister for, for Environment was not even aware that there is a project like that that had been executed by another ministry. That is why when governments upon governments they appoint, is it the coordination, is it Minister for, for Projects and Coordination, I don't know what name, uh, Honorable uh, Dr. Akuto say of blessed memory. You know, okay. He was made, he was appointed. I remember when NDC won, uh, uh, this gentleman, Dr. Uh, if I remember, I'm, I'm sorry, Dr. One of, one, somebody was also appointed. I mean, there, basically, the responsibility was to coordinate the activities of various ministries and agencies, you know, so that you can find out the linkages. And that is what leads to progress and development. Mm -hmm. But when ministries works and agencies works in silos or in isolation, Ministry of Energy doesn't know what Ministry of Trade does. Mm -hmm. When, in fact, the work they do sometimes can be completely related. Okay. Ministry of Agri doesn't know what the Ministry of uh, Health does. When you know that the health complementary. has a lot of complementary work that ought to be done. Ministry of Water and Sanitation or the Bola Minister. Sanitation. Bola. <laughs> That's the African name. Yeah. If they don't know how, how other ministers. So you end up spending money executing either the same projects or similar projects. But if there were these linkages in terms of how budgets are prepared, how programs are designed, how projects you know, are planned and executed, we would have been saving the country millions of dollars. But you observe, and I would challenge you, go through the budget lines of each of the ministries. And it is not just under only this government. I mean, I must admit, go through the budget line. You realize that you can have two or three ministries doing virtually the same, same thing. thing. So this ministry will be spending 100 million Ghana cities to do this. Another ministry will be spending 70 million Ghana to do this. Another ministry will be spending 15 million. When one ministry could have done that, so that there is that interlinkages, our planning processes are just terrible. And that is why several planners will tell you that in Africa, we, we implement before we plan. And when you implement before you plan, that's why sometimes you have this knee-jerk response to some of these issues. So I think we need to look at it holistically. It is very clear, Ghana Gas certainly cannot be happy. No. You think that the, the workers' union of Ghana Gas making this thing, the leadership is unaware. Mm -hmm. But the leadership cannot be seen opposing that which is a project of government. I am very convinced that the minister for, 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 for energy. energy may not be happy about some of these things. Maybe the only agency that will be happy will be the Ghana, Ghana, uh, what's the name? GMPC. GMPC. They will be happy mm -hmm. because sometimes they feel that once it is executed under us, they will be. Let's respect those institutions. Let's respect the people we have appointed. But in this case, you have ministers who are appointed. You have some individuals who do not have official portfolio at the Flagstaff House mm -hmm. and who determine how the ministries are run. The MPP flag bearer, uh, contestant, Ajaku, said it on your program. He mentioned some, someone's name. They, they determined who, who is appointed, who is this. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, they don't even have positions. And when you ask, I am not a minister, I don't have any position. But everybody knows that they, they, are, they are the, they, power, they are the they power. It doesn't help. The, once again, the point I made earlier, the building of the institutions and the independence of the institutions. And that is why we consider it a cosmic concern that we need to speak about some of this distance. Look, we've agreed to charter the part of democracy. And when we, are, we, we have agreed that never again should we be ruled by a dictator or a military dictator, rule of law ought to be adhered to, institutions must be. People think that when you talk about rule of law and accountable governance, it's just when the state is there and the state institutions are operating. But when those state institutions are independent, operating in an environment that there are no insulbecks. And it is not for nothing when Obama visited Ghana and addressing parliament, he said that Africa doesn't need strong leaders. Africa needs strong institutions. Actions such as this are denying those institutions they are independent. And I think that we need to speak strongly against them. Else, we must as well abandon this democracy we are practicing. Mm -hmm. Now, we were told yesterday that there are some discount. I mean, that, that's also a huge issue that came up when this matter came up, that there, there's a huge discount GMPC is giving Jensa. 
Is Parliament aware of this? And what, what are you doing about it? Well, I can't sit here and pretend to be aware of the so-called discount. So okay. discount. If you have a state institution that can do that, why are you giving it to another state institution and giving them discount? The only reason why you'll be considering giving a discount to somebody you want to engage in, in a business environment is because they feel that the profit they will be getting will not be to their satisfaction. They need to maximize profits and therefore give them discount. It simply doesn't make sense. This government should get out of this deal. I don't care the consequences as to whether a contract has been signed. I don't think that it has because until par Parliament finishes with some of those things, even if they sign the contract, Parliament has the capacity to raise some of these issues. But you see, it also brings to fore the kind of democracy we practice in Ghana. This, the hybridity of our democracy is also creating problems for us. Look, we have, we have practiced all the system, the parliamentary system after independence. We've tasted or we tried the executive system or the presidential system. And I believe that occasion why the 1992 constitution was fashioned out of, if you like, a blend of both the parliamentary system or the Westminster system and also the presidential system mm -hmm. so that we can avoid some of this. Unfortunately, we don't seem to be running away from them. You have someone who is a member of the executive who sat at cabinet to take decisions. Whether he agrees or disagrees with the decisions, and even if he raises objections, he may be the only person who disagrees. Now, such a person comes to parliament, and then when he comes to parliament, he removed the gown, the executive gown, mm -hmm. and he's now on the, the legislative gown. He cannot be seen in conscience, kicking against a very thing that was that brought executive. by the. So I think we should take steps, and for me, there, there is no any excuse in implementing, if you like, the, the Constitutional Review Commission's work. Okay. Let's insulate the legislative arm from, from the executive arm. Let's insulate it completely. There are people who are vying to become members of parliament, not because they, they have that heart to serve as members of parliament, but they see that as a route through which they become ministers. ministers. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, if we take this thing away, we'll begin to assert the independence of the legislature will begin to see the true work of the legislature and how independent they are. And I tell you, the monetization of parliamentary primaries will not be as it is today. Okay. Unfortunately, that is not the case in this country. Do you know the Ghanaian MPs are the least paid in Africa? Hmm. Do you know that? You tell me. Oh, you can find out. Hmm. But you see, Sometimes Ghanaians are just justified in terms of the concerns they raise because they expect that as a legislative arm we should assert our independence. They may not know that there are instalments in ensuring that we are independent because of the constitutional provisions. The president must appoint more than his 50% of his ministers from parliament. parliament. So Ghanaians watching us and expecting us to be independent, they don't seem to see that. And that is why it is of tremendous concern to them that even when we point out to them we are the least paid. They will ask, what have you delivered? Show us what you have delivered in terms of asserting your independence. And we may be comfortable with you even given salaries and allowances that would ensure your independence. So it's like a double-edged sword. Mm -hmm. We need to look at that. And to be very honest, I think that we must demand that the there is a full implementation of the Constitutional Review Commission's work. Last point. I had the privilege, opportunity to have participated in, in the draft of the... 40-year development plan of Ghana. And my minister, Dr. Spio Gabra, gave me the opportunity most often to represent him. And when I represented, attended some of the meetings, I saw fine brains in these countries. Mm -hmm. Professors from academia, people from who served both in NPP, NDC, people who served in previous administrations. These were the creme de la creme of those who, you know, Throughout participated and grown up. And I remember in February 2017, when Dr. Nimoy Thompson presented the 40-year development plan to the president on TV, the president said, look, I have seen several development plans. I must say that this is the most comprehensive and excellent development plan. These are my words I'm just paraphrasing, paraphrasing of development plan I've ever seen. I believe after they left the Flagstaff House, the president, the president looked for the, the, the closest that's been and threw it there. With all the nice oh. words, and I'm, I'm saying this with all the nice words said to you. I mean, I, I'm I, saying I, I believe. Yeah, why I don't no, I have? An, no, I don't think it's. Do you know why I say that? Uh -huh. I say this because with all the nice words mm. 
with which the president described the plan, not a single word, not a single thing in, in that plan has been attempted to be implemented by the president. And, and I am worried. Have you done uh, an MNE to find out that not a single of if the there plans? Is, if there is one, show me. Look, the excuse that have always been given is that, oh, the president is not obliged because there isn't any, any force by law that every president must implement what we have in the NDPC. government plan. But I was saying that the worst, the worst that we're used to describe them, and I was encouraged. I disagree with President Nanado on several issues. But the way he described it, I was, I was, there was some faint of hope and encouragement in me when I watched the president. Why is it that it wasn't implemented? Maybe perhaps we need to demand through a legislative instrument in parliament that every political party, for you to draft your manifesto, you must draft your manifesto tailored Based towards down. what we have in the 40-year development plan, mm -hmm. such that you can have variations, but you would have no option than to go in but, accordance. But that's the work. That's the work. Uh, that's, work uh, that's what I'm saying, do. and I'm, I'm throwing a challenge to my brother no. that we can begin mm -hmm. to come with a motion, mm -hmm. a private uh, or a bill. We can begin to look at how we can force political parties. So once Parliament comes out with that legislative instrument. Whether you like it or not, every political party must draft their manifesto mindful of the 40-year development plan we, we have for this country. Okay. Maybe perhaps that will help. So, well, so is, is, uh -huh. I, um, uh, I think Mutala said it all. Um, my only issue is that Mutala will never speak without um, bringing in uh, President he is the president of Ghana. I mean, so, so who would I bring? I should bring in Mama. A report, a report is submitted to the president. In your own words, the president accepts and passes very good judgment on it. Why would the president throw it to the dust? I said perhaps. What oh. is perhaps? Oh. I don't think it's, it's a fair. conditional I mean, statement. I, I so don't why is it? Why is it that the president has failed um, to implement that which he described with those? You know, he slung, you know, the president uh, how, how do you How do you sit on this show and say that the president has failed? In uh, you see, most what of I this... I have gone through the entire document. And, 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 and really, I mean, how different is it from what we are experiencing? Nothing. Right? Nothing. Mm -hmm. what, what does the report say? Oh, you want us to see... No, you said you've gone through. I have not, I have not gone through. What yeah. does the report say? Or what, 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 what is the report suggesting that is not being done? A whole lot of things. Like what? Just mention one on In fact, this some of the things that the... 40 years, sorry, the Constitution Review mm -hmm. Commission. Yeah. All those, some of them were encapsulated. But he, he was to give us talking an, uh, about the 40 year development plan. I'll just give you an example. Insulating like the legislative arm from the, if you like, the executive. Is it containing the 40 year development yeah, plan? Go it through is. the document. Go through it. I mean, I, uh, I'm a development planner by okay. profession. Okay. I, and, and I was so angry. In fact, we have three planners in Parliament myself and, and the, the my majority leader, and Honorable Mutaka. That oh, I know. oh, Simon, um, uh, 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 the majority leader, leader um, and then we, we all did Mutaka. planning at, at KNUSD. Okay. Yes. 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 Okay. I did my second degree in planning. Honorable Mutaka did, I think, first degree and second degree in planning. Okay. And Honorable Chia, I think, first degree he did in planning. Very experienced person. But I'm saying that as a planner, when I, I went through the document and when the president made that thing, to be very honest with you, I was so encouraged. Okay. M maybe like the mm. point I made earlier, which I thought you were going to emphasize on, we need to begin looking at a legislative instrument which will now force political parties in, in drafting their manifesto. They take into consideration a development plan which is accepted by all. Mind you, it was done by under President Mahama. President Nanado, his comments were very positive. It okay. means that genuinely he, uh, he believed that. So maybe we need to be looking at that. Okay. Uh, yeah, what can I say perhaps? Okay. But, but, uh, this uh, uh, GMPC Jensa deal, if, you, if the NDC comes to power, is, this, is there a deal that you may probably want to look at? Oh, there are a lot of things. How is the, how is the NDC coming to power? Oh, oh, but are you saying that they will never come to power? Me, we have Because heard. this Jensa deal doesn't have, you know, it is no, not, see, it's, see, it is theirs. Oh, no, so probably they can be Me, we have heard this. So in 2016, hey, mm -hmm. you people will not come to power. Hey, you people in 2008 not, or 2016? 2016. Uh, you were telling them. I'm saying that 2016, I never said so. Okay. So as a Muslim, I no, know. I mean the NDC. Yes, was telling the NDC. I'm speaking here as Muslim <laughs> okay. because I know that you see those of us who are Muslims. Mm -hmm. There is a chapter in the Quran called Surah Al Al Imran, and Allah says that كل الله هم مالك الملك تعطي الملك من تشاء وتنزع الملك من من تشاء وتؤز من تشاء وتزل من تشاء. That Allah is the King of all kings. He determines okay. who rules at any point in time. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying okay. to explain mm -hmm. who rules. 
leadership, he gives leadership to those he pleases. Mm. He denies leadership for no. those he pleases, not he displeases. Okay. So at any point in time, I am not that kind of arrogant politician who thinks that we must be in power. You cannot be in power. A lot of people said that to Nanado. He can never be, be president, president of Ghana. But Allah in his wisdom, he is. You can keep on saying that President Mahama can never come back. I am very convinced that inshallah President Mahama is winning the 2024 elections. Because all your candidates, I listened to our friend, and you guys have been unfair to Honorable Kennedy of Japan. You are all with him in parliament. And Honorable Jogati. You know what he said? He said, all those who participated in creating this mess should not be elected as the flag bearers of MPP. And you know those he's talking to? He's talking about Dr. Bamir, he's talking about Alan Chinmantin, he's talking about the Minister for Agric. Uh, Dr. Afri. Afri, because they've all participated in creating the mess. In mm -hmm. his wisdom, he's the only person who never participated in the mess in which okay. we are. And therefore, they must not be elected. So maybe the only candidate you may have elected who would have some justification in saying that I didn't participate in this mess is Nana Poku, is Adainimo, Adainimo, fine gentleman, he's my very good friend. Okay. And you have the former minister for energy. Uh, he promised that he was going to tell the people of this country. Why he resigned, he still has not told us. So credibility wise, I don't think that any of we'll, we'll, we'll come. We'll come to that, that, that sir, but, but I'm, I, I asked the question that would a future NDC government look into this? Deal and probably I'm abrogate very, a contract absolutely. somewhere. I'm not only, there are a lot of things that we would have to look at. A lot of things we'd have to look at. Because if you don't look at them, Ghanaians will be very, very angry. I mean, it's, it's amazing in, in this country, some of the things that happen. Look, if a scintilla of the things that happen in this country, mm. that some of you journalists are quiet about, if a scintilla of such had happened under President Mahama, perhaps you would have been calling for a truncation of our democratic process. Okay. President right. Mahama, a lot of things you guys were on, particularly multimedia. So you are saying that we have not done, we have not, we have not, we have not done same. You are in a complete state of incommunicado. I don't know what really? you guys have eaten. Yes. Hey. Oh, recently yes. you've watched how we, we uh, our project about asking the president about his campaign promises. Compare. We've oh, done all of those things. You're compare, saying that. Compare the mm -hmm. things you did. Under President Mahama and what you've done here, you call me an apologize and apologize to your view in public. Every day, everything, even some of the things you were not cross-checking, you come out, bring them. When under President Mahama, oh, under this president, no, you are not discussing them. Meanwhile, you discuss similar things. I refuse this tag. Ah, well, we've, I done, we've done enough. I don't expect you for, to for this. Oh, I mean, uh, you, the lizard, you know, when uh, the lizard turns his head this way, uh -huh. know what it is. Is that what? If you don't praise me, I'll praise myself. Oh, no, no, this, this <laughs> is not like I'm pleasing myself. But the point is that multimedia has really done enough. Now, Godwin Ajetena, who says, it's because sometimes the planning processes of the executives, the task workers, the task workers can be terrible and can end up sub shortchanging the nation and people. It's why Parliament was instituted to scrutinize and to give policy credibility in the interest of the nation and the people. You guys in Parliament have been abysmal in dealing with the oversight responsibility. It's a shame. But this is what I have been saying all the time to Ghanaians. You don't select professors educated in India, place them in a, uh, in a boardroom and expect them to speak with British accent. So, so you see the point, um, the point he made. Uh, so, a, so here, I've just told you that there are constitutional provisions that mm. denies parliament that, that independence. Okay. You, have, you, have, you have members of parliament who are ministers of state. Yeah, they so certainly cannot be independent so when should, it comes they, to they the world. They should, they should be That's insulated. Okay. Marcos Ekwamwa says, Gabi Ochoa Dako and his uncle, President Ekufuado, as a setting very bad precedent. Kwesi Manuel says, Mutala, just say the PM, Gabi, is determining everything. <laughs> uh, Musa Abatua says, MPP 2020 manifesto page 160 reads, quote, reduce taxes on electricity tariffs to households and industry. Our, good, our government is the first in the history of the uh, Fourth Republic to have reduced electricity prices in cumulative terms of 11%, negative 11% compared who, who sent, to... Who sent them? Uh, Musa Abatua. Is he aware that by, to, by next two weeks, uh, hold on. we'll be paying compared more, to a more tariffs on of, electricity uh, and water? Uh, <laughs> Uh, at the time, I was paying 50 uh, per month. Today, I'm paying 200 per month, wow. and they're increasing it quarterly. Insensitive government. Musa Abatua sent in that one. These were uh, messages on when our I Facebook. I buy power 500. Mm. I buy 500. By the time you realize, I just have to check, and you realize that I need mm. to buy again. In fact, in a month, I don't even know how, how much I buy power. I hardly use even a condition, to be very honest with you. But the way the power runs mm. is so frightening. It's so frightening. So, so you're not happy about the increment coming up on 1st no. September? 
who will be happy? But PRC says that it is to ensure that we pay the right amount for utility. When we pay the right amount for utility, we want to see an improvement in the service delivered. Look, Ghanaians are not averse to tax payment. Ghanaians are not against paying taxes. The reason why people have justification in opposing taxes that are imposed on them is because they don't see the a commensurate delivery of services. Mm -hmm. Do you know we are still paying COVID levy? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why are we still paying COVID levy? I have been asking these questions. I filed a question in Parliament. This incompetent Minister for Finance has refused to answer that question, and I have been demanding. Now, if you impose COVID levy because you think that there were some expenses that were made as a result of COVID-19, okay? Now, we want to know how much you have collected so far. And as to whether we have finished paying that for which you gave us the so-called free water and free electricity. Mm. I never benefited from the free electricity. I don't think my friend benefited from the free electricity. Oh, or, yeah? Uh, Why? You, you needed to be a... A lifeline like consumer. Exactly. I mean, you have a... Yeah. You certainly mm. didn't. So, but you enjoyed the free water. No, I'm saying that the free water... In fact, at that time, the taps were not even right. Oh, really? Oh, no. please. I, I did enjoy okay, it. Anyway. Granted. Mm. Granted. Mm. Don't you think that it is legitimate, it mm. is fair, that you tell us how much you have collected so far. Mm -hmm. oh, Assuming yes. that you spend 10 million Ghana cities in providing us free water and free electricity, and the taxes you have taken so far is about $20 million, wouldn't that amount to stealing? No, we but need to know. It, it would allow. We it, need to you, know. You, you, you sit on TV and, and you, are, you are in a privileged position as a member. I said, I family. filed a question. You and I asked that, hold on, hold on, hold on. At the end of the day. Hold on, hold on. I, I filed a question. Just go for your hold mid. On. Please, please, please. I filed, that's what parliamentarians you do. I filed a question yes. for the minister to answer this question. The minister and, has it. No, and I have been asking parliament, why is it that this means they will give excuses upon excuses? Mm. And I'm saying that. I am doing my bit. I expect you. Journalists to also do your bid. Everybody is giving a suggestion as to what you, else I'm you can do. That, I mean, just go for your, your, your budget. You are able to know how much revenue came in. And there are line items. That as to is how not much, there. That why, is, why, why is I it challenge there? you to prove why me wrong. Why is it not there? That, why, why would I? Why look, is it not there? Look, why, would, I, I, why, look, would, why would the Ministry of Finance look, me, not, not capture? Me, let me tell you. Oh, a lot of things that were hidden in the budget. You've just admitted yes. that you did some of those things because of the IMF deal. A lot. Don't even let us go there. Well, when did when did he admit oh, that one? Not not, yeah, I mean, not, not, okay. I'm saying that if he, we he, ask he's questions... Always, he's always engaged in propaganda. I'm surprised. Propaganda. I'm just telling you I'm, that... I'm telling you as a member of the, parliament, the, the bank you should not sit on TV I and say be telling us that you don't even know the, how much is coming I'm in. I'm saying that it is not there. You, it is. Okay, okay, okay. okay, 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 okay hold on, hold on. That's what I was going to ask. I'm saying that. I'm saying that. It is a responsibility of government. I mean, if... if Are you are you suggesting on this show that the government refused to capture... Yes. Revenues we've got. Oh, but you've been doing that. No, please. This minister, uh, let's look. Let's not do that. Uh, this don't minister, engage okay, if, if it is how much. It's even an insult on how much, the entire parliament. Okay, how, the parliament how much? How much? Approve the mid year budget. I say, how uh, much is it? You, you, you debate the mid year budget. That same. You're unable to see oh, oh, oh. that line item. And you never read it. That same parliament, that that same news, parliament we have been to. telling you please. that this minister hide figures. He hide things from the parliament. If you think that you have it, tell me. What? Okay. 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 I haven't seen it. Okay. Hold on. Um, in, in May 2022, yeah. uh, it was reported that COVID-19 levy had raked in $773.93 million in, in eight months. How, how, yeah. how much did they spend in providing the free water and free electricity? And for which reason this and, amount of money? You see, I, I, it, are, you, are you saying, oh, are you okay, saying okay. that the government, government says it spent 1.7 billion cities? So this is March 2021. But government spent 1.7 billion cities on COVID-19. And then it, this it's one is me what? It's Mutala suggesting oh, oh, oh. that. We are asking questions. Oh, please. You've had the, I've given you the opportunity to... You do, haven't given you've any been ranting, no. You've been ranting let, let, all let, day. Let, let I mean, speak. Yeah. it's Mutala suggesting mm -hmm. that the money, the COVID-19 levy, the money that came, that came in was used only for uh, the provision of free electricity. No, that's not what I said. Free water. That is not what I that, said. That, that, that he, he would want to equate that. No, that is, not, that is not what I said. But that's what you this suggested on this, this show. This government told us. You, do you want hold, a playback of what on, you just hold said? On. I said, yes, this government told us. Let me mm -hmm. tell you why I made mean. This government told us they were giving us free water and free electricity. Yes. yes. They told us. Hold on. Mm -hmm. Of course. I mean, oh, can uh, I do you expect the president to... Oh, can oh, I finish? Okay. Free, free let, water let, and free electricity. I'll let you come in. This government told us that they were giving us free water and free electricity. Would you pay for it? Oh, please. You say we're giving us free because we had COVID. Yes. And mind you, Senegal did that. Mind you, Senegal even paid rents free. 
Uh -huh. They didn't ask the people to pay any taxes for the purposes of that. Mm -hmm. You went in and borrowed over $3 billion from the IMF, over $300 million from the World Bank. How, you, how, got, you got hundreds of millions of dollars grants from how the do you, you How do you pay you went, hold all on, can I finish? Can I finish? How do you you borrowed the those money in the name of COVID. <laughs> and you told us that you have given us free. Free is free. Now, only for you to turn around and tell us that, no, when we said free, we were tricking you. You have to pay for it. Now, you impose a levy on us. Don't you think that it should be fair to tell us how much you spend, how much you have collected so far? You know why? You know, I filed a question in Parliament mm -hmm. demanding from the Minister for Finance to tell us how much they have generated as a result of the sales of power mm -hmm. to our neighbours. You know, at the time when they said that we went in for excess capacity, which we didn't, when the Minister appeared before Parliament, you know why he said, oh, we are making about... 140 million dollars a year and i said don't tell me about tell me what you are making you are the minister for finance he got angry i said i wasn't holding a dagger before you remember those of you who watched, he was very angry so you don't come and tell me about tell me the figure it's something you have collected already so you don't come and say about tell me this is how much you have collected this year this year my question was specific mm. how much you have collected each year since 2000 and something but how is this related to the PS, no no i'm just PS saying that i'm just saying that it's the mm. same point we are making mm -hmm. you should tell us that we have spent this amount of money this is how much we have collected so far mm. and it comes back to my point assuming that gov okay let's assume that government what government stated that they spent one one point something billion in providing us with what is it water with the not entire, just, not just I'm saying water. that is it water with the entire COVID? The levy was specific for the purposes of some of the things they provided. Now, if you have spent this amount of money, wouldn't it be fair mm. for you to tell us that this is how much you have collected so far? Okay. Assuming that's, that's, that the that's money is there, I think your, your, so far. your point is yes. well made. Let, let Davis, Davis had, had a point. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm only surprised that, mm. I mean, that, that you sit on this show and, and, and want to find out how much. The government has rigged in on, on this levy. I mean, I didn't say I'm, I want to find out here. I'm just, exp I was making a point no, and I no, said, no, hold, on, hold on, hold on. No, I was making a point mm. and I said, I have filed a question in yeah, parliament. parliament. Yes. Demanding, the yes. minister is refusing okay. to come. That's what I'm saying. That's how, that's how, that's how, how do you even sit on this program mm. and say that the minister is refusing to come to parliament? You know how he refuses. On the very day we rose, the minister was in parliament. Oh, no, no. Oh. If you file questions, no, please, go. Mutala. If you file questions in parliament, mm. It is not the minister that comes to say that I've seen that Mutala has filed the question. The, the parliamentary service need, needs to provide the minister, uh, I mean, uh, furnish the minister which, which they with did. those questions. Which they did. Oh, I mean, don't, stop. Oh, stop no, that. I said, which they did. And, and it is mandated. The, mini, the minister is mandated to come to parliament to answer those questions. The minister give. He cannot, no, let he me cannot tell you run let, away. Let him finish. Let the him minister I want to give a response of Let him land. From, from, but, I'm, mm -hmm. but I'm saying that if you pick your budget, Eh? Mm -hmm. And you go to whatever uh, appendix 10, uh, C or 10A, uh -huh. you are able to Z. know all the revenues that government uh, collected, the sources of revenue and, and how it, is, it, it, it was expended. You understand? Mm -hmm. So you don't sit on this program and create the impression that government has collected COVID-19 money and you, don't, you are not even... Mm -hmm. Of course, if the minister is on the floor of parliament answering, answering questions, and, and you rise to ask the minister a question, and it, it tells you that, well, uh, we, 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 so far, we've collected about. No, he, yeah. uh, no, he wasn't, I didn't rise to ask. I, I filed a question. Hold on, please. Mm. I filed a question. The question will be sent to the minister, specifically. Mm -hmm. I want to know how much we have collected each year from 2017. So you don't come tell me about, you don't uh, tell me that. You don't tell me that, you tell me that, as if the minister just came to parliament, you know, to answer questions, that, I, asked, I filed a specific that, question. That since 2017, so the minister yes. started collecting uh, uh, COVID-19. No, not COVID. You see, he's not even listening. I was making that point mm -hmm. and I said, I gave an example when I filed a question as to how much government has collected as, as a result of the sales of yeah. power to our neighbors. Uh -huh. I said, the minister in his response said, they collect about 150 I think we, we need to yes. focus and on I the said, utility no. tariff. So the point I'm just it's making on, us away from the yes, tariff. Yes, yeah. The point I'm making on the utility, you know that the appendices you are talking about wouldn't give you the detailed breakdown. It won't. So if I filed a question, I want the minister to come and tell me, this was how much we spent, not the entire COVID, to provide you with free water, free electricity. That's the reason why that levy is there. Mm. 
Tell me how much you spent in these two provisions. You need to be finding out from much? Parliament. No. So why, that is why you need to I be finding out from Parliament no. why your question is no. Not no, no, I did. See, that's why you're even responsibility of. I did. What, who is not listening? You I mean, not. You see, when I filed the question, you, you are here. You are here. Why I say making you making see, I, 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 I'm, that I'm making my point. Hold water. You are asking me, and I'm telling you what I did as a responsible member of Parliament representing the good people of Tamale Central. After I filed the question. The parliament called me and said, oh, the minister said he will not be able to come. I said, okay, then when? Then the ministry, parliament contacted them and they gave a different date. I said, fine. That day, the minister said, oh, they are still looking for the information. Until they get the information, they will not be able to come to respond. Are you okay. serious? The minister for finance is in charge. So he hasn't responded to the Yes, question. it's deliberate. Look, I am, I am going to, and he, if he has time, will go to parliament, I would file the question again. And see what happened. So you won't, so he knows that okay. battle, they wouldn't want to okay. answer. So let, let's come to the utility. And, and sometimes when it comes, it's evasive. If he says, I don't we know want why to, he wants to defend the minister of finance. He's not defending the minister. He's only trying to provide you with information. Oh, okay. Davis, yeah. uh, the PRC says that we we are increasing utility tariffs so that we would ensure that the right uh, you know prices are paid for utility that that are uh, provided the supply to us. Not enough a justification for the increase. Well, um, for somebody with a background, uh, I mean, having uh, led several demonstrations uh -huh. against increment, in, uh, it, 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 it will not be uh, pleasant news for me. I mean, uh, reading that the PRC wants to increase uh, utility by some 4.2%. Uh, that said, we must look at the reasons as outlined. I mean, now, for instance, if you pick uh, electricity generation in our country and the managers of electricity, I mean, uh, electricity company of Ghana, you, you yeah. realize that the young man who is now the CEO is putting a lot of measures mm -hmm. to, 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 to uh, 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 for want of word, plug the various loopholes. Um, in my constituency, last week, entire ECG staff, including the accounts department, are on the field trying to collect revenues uh, uh, for and the state I mean, and, and identify illegal connections. And it is largely because of how ECG and these utility providers are indebted. I mean, from where I sit as a member of the Western Housing Committee, I know that Ghana Water is struggling because for them, the, the amount of money they spend in even buying chemicals to treat our water mm. is not what they are getting in return. So consistently, when they come to the committee, they insist that we, we, we need to join the advocacy uh, in trying to uh, 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 call on the PRC to increase whatever comes in for them. But of course, we as parliamentarians or even as government need to balance the, 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 the I mean, you need, you need to have a balance because you also do not want to overburden the Ghanaian populace. But if these monies will be channeled into improving the provision of these utilities, then I, I think that as Ghanaians, we should be, because at least uh, in the last six months, we have seen that the ECG, that, that, that uh, initially people felt that they were not, not capable of collecting revenues. We've seen a different ECG. We've seen them on the field, um, despite the fact that there's been challenges with, in, the, in the energy value chain, in the uh, electricity value chain, uh, Doomso is not like what we, we saw during the NDC's <laughs> era. <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, all I love, of this... I laugh like killer. <laughs> oh, of course. I mean, uh, now you don't see people... Uh, when, when the NDC was in power, oh, no. you pass I through Joy FM and you see uh, people selling generators like the way they sell coconut you just know, in front you know of that, you. You know that Kumasi movie, I laugh like killer. <laughs> okay. okay. So, so, so I am appealing to Ghanaians that we need to look at the reasons out, as, as outlined by uh, PRC. And, 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 and if possible, I mean, 
UCG wants some 4.2 percent. Ghana water wants less than a two percent. And um, if this will improve on water generation in our country, uh, then I think we, we need to do that. I have made several requests to the to Ghana water to extend water to some communities in my constituency. And uh, what I get is that they are struggling even in the purchase of their pipes and all of that because the revenues that are coming in for them it, it, it does not match what they are the, they the, the production to. To, to, to produce and, and all of that. So every, every time they are in trouble, they are in financial difficulties and all of that. So we are appealing to Ghanaians. I mean, yes, these are difficult moments. These are hard times. Um, that that I, I admit. I mean, yeah. but um, we, 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 need to, we need to come to the aid of these companies because okay. it would be very suicidal if uh, Ghana Water comes to tell us that um, the cost of production is high, they are not getting the needed revenue and so for that matter. They are unable to extend water or electricity to certain parts of the country. We cannot also deny, uh, um, I mean, today, rural electrification programs uh, is, 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 is not going on like we would expect, likely because there's no money. Mm -hmm. So when we incre increase that we tariff, a lot of money <coughs> to help. we extend electricity to communities that do not have, so that they also enjoy the national grid. I mean, their kids are writing the same exams just as Mutala's children in East Legon. I mean, oh, I don't yeah. live at East Legon anyway. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, uh, so, so Mutala, your, your, your point on this tariff increment. Uh, the, I'll give you like three minutes and then we can move on. The difference is that my kids attend government school. And the difference is that their father has not kept millions of dollars in his room. The difference is that there are several families out there who get extremely worried when government is demanding that they pay more tariffs. A PRC is not government. Oh, you see, to be the height of naivety to assume that the PRC works as an absolute independent institution. The president declared that he was reducing tariffs that were paid by hairdressers. Have you forgotten? Sometime in 2018, didn't he know that the PRC was having the exclusive right to determine that? When you tell people to pay more, and then you have Bank of Ghana, Spending 32 million Ghana cities on communication. 32 million Ghana cities on communication. What kind of communication? Mm -hmm. Are they communicating for all the banks in Africa? Yet we had the governor without any shame holding press conference. 32 million, he didn't even talk about that one. When you are talking about people sacrificing, the same Bank of Ghana spending over 8 million. Can you finish the utility so we move on to the Bank of Ghana issues? About, no, I'm talking about utility. Mm -hmm. We are not having a straight, what I'm discussing mm -hmm. is an intellectual discourse. You are bringing in a lot of, of course, of, you are asking mm -hmm. us to pay. Mm -hmm. Then we are pointing out to you, is it like your kid's school fees has not been paid? You haven't paid your kid's school fees. And then you went out, you bought the best of suit. Those of them who wear the best of suit and the, you know the check check socks people. Mm -hmm. You know how much they pay? They wear check check socks and they have beads in their hands. How much they spend on those? If you do that, you are an irresponsible father that your kids' school fees have not been paid, and you have the luxury to wear the best of suit and pay so much money, then you tell your kids that, don't worry, don't go to school this week, because I don't have money. The kids look at you and you are wearing the best of a new suit, very expensive. The kids will see that you are an irresponsible father. So when you are asking people to pay taxes or pay more tariffs, it's not about the payment. One, they want to see the service you deliver. They want to know how much of the energy that is lost through illegal connection. Is it our responsibility to identify those who connect illegally? It is the responsibility of ECG. Is it our responsibility to identify and stop the 25% of water that is produced that is lost as a result of leakage? Is it the responsibility of those who pay them? It is the responsibility of Ghana Water Company. So if they have failed to act responsibly, why has that become our, our burden? Why? We are told over 25% or what percentage is being lost because of pipes that are not functioning well. Yet you are asking me to pay money to cover your irresponsibility and recklessness. I'll be worried. I will be very worried. So look, people, and, and, and I don't know, I've said this umpteen times. 
I don't know how many times I'm going to say it again. Mm -hmm. People are not against the payment of taxes. But they want to see a reflection of the taxes they pay in the service you provide. Now but for, ta for utility, the, the lights are on. Hmm? The lights are on. So that should be No, by the, way, by the way, he said that, not the Dumso, President Muhammad Saul Dumso, Dr. Baumia himself admitted, he said, so we should praise him for solving Dumso. And as a result of the capacity we built, that is the reason why the minister said we're making over $140 million from excess capacity being sold to other people. Okay. As a result of what President Muhammad did, mm. that is the reason why we have stability in our energy. Look, I have taken the pain to find out how we experience Dumso in this country. And do you know that every five years or ten years or seven years we experience Dumso? Mm. Presid President Muhammad didn't want to have a knee-jerk response. He wanted to have a permanent solution to the problem. Mm. And for which reason? Today you have the luxury to say that there is stability in energy. Okay. What did you do? All right. Thank you. I'm grateful. Uh, in our last moment, let, let's just combine the BOG and then the MPP uh, delegate congress that's coming up. Who is I'm sure, I'm sure. I'm sure. It's an island. Oh, but you know, of course. He, oh, I mean, he, I think everybody knows who I support. Mm. I that's a, one thing I respect him. Mm. I'm for Alain Chamati. On Saturday, I will vote for Alain Chamati. Okay. And um, my worry is that people seem to be creating a lot of noise about these super delegates. Uh, Super delegates, if you look at the Electoral College, that is just 0.04% of the college that will elect the flag bearer of the party on November 4th. Mm -hmm. In the wisdom of the party, I mean, uh, having come in, uh, uh, coming out of the 207, we felt that we needed to prune down the number to five. So this is just an administrative process. I've seen a lot of energies, people wanting to score. 90%, some saying they will score 95%. At the end of the day, five people will be elected. It will be selected. It's not even elected. Five people will be selected and presented to the polling station officers of the Elect party. One. I mean, for me, they, they matter. There are over 210,000 people. They matter. Not the 900 people who are going to vote. Of course, I mean, you cannot also overrule the influence of the 900 people going to vote this Saturday. But that said, I was telling somebody this morning that if the electoral college that is going to select the five people on Saturday were the same colleague that uh, were supposed to elect the general secretary of the party and also the uh, 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 national chairman of the party, Stephen Intim and uh, 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 Justin Kodia would not have been national chairman. Because they were all pro Alan. They would not have been. Because they were all pro Alan. Yes. Not, not, that, not that they are pro Alan. Oh but I'm saying that the choice, I mean, of, of the top, then, we also saw regional chairman come together, uh, declare, try and whip people in line to vote for their choices during the, our national delegates conference to elect national officers of the party. But we also saw what happened. So the party has its own way of speaking. I mean, uh, this is a party that has very strong spirit. Mm -hmm. If the party feels that it is your time to lead the party. It is not what the top thinks. And so I am not too worried about the outcome of Saturday. I know Alan Chamati will be elected, uh, selected. Kenny Japon will go through. Dr. Baumia will go through. We are only going to select two other more to add to them. Remember that, that, is that, there's a paper who reported that two, uh, seven people fighting for two slots. So you mean that? You already know among oh, the ten, which I mean, of them. Yes, you, you certainly, uh, Alan, Dr. Baumia, and okay. uh, Kennedy of Japan, okay. will certainly go through. I mean, from, from what we, we see in, 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 the, in the MPP. But at the end of the day, it's like um, uh, writing BEC, and Achimota College, Achimota School says that uh, from aggregate 6 to 10, I'm going to admit you at Achimota College. You get six. I get eight. Somebody gets ten. We all end up in Achimota College. And you say that you are... And in the final exam, the ten person pass passes you. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> so this whole thing, and I've seen on social media, Shanti Regin. See, the real deal is how our polling station executives are failing on the ground. Okay. I've gone around the country. I've been campaigning. Um, I've been listening to what people are saying and all of that. People are not happy. 
people are not happy. You understand? And, and for me... Few people are eating, whilst the majority... I, I won't say that. I won't you say know, that. I'm, I'm only, I mean, you've listened to them. That's why I was asking yeah. whether that's what they told well, you. Well, <laughs> well, that may be part of the reasons why... People uh, are not happy. Uh, yes. But, you see, the, the reality is that people are not happy. I mean, and, and the last time a police station officer in my constituency uh, reminded me what happened in some in, in, in year 2000 when Kufo wanted to be president. And the song that... Uh, uh, resonated well across she the length and breadth. She was sitting in the Abapa. That is what the police station people are saying. They are going to share Oma Sitinemu and to Tua Abapa. <laughs> <laughs> yes, people are going to look at their welfare <laughs> ever since the party came, the opportunities they have, they have gotten, and, and, and more especially, the winability of the various candidates that will submit to them. I am very confident that among the five, Yes, they are all capable, they are all competent, competent and all of that. But after Friday, after Saturday, we all get down and begin to market why we think that our candidate is the best person. For. So, so um, we are looking uh, uh, forward to the selection of the other two to join the three at the top so that uh, we present them to, to the party leadership. And, and this attempt to... I've, I've heard my, my leader say that if somebody gets between 60 to 70 percent uh, on uh, Saturday... Uh, you mean majority leader? Yeah, there should be, that person should be allowed to go. I disagree with him. I, I totally disagree with him. I, I, I think that th that college cannot determine who leads the party. The college that determines who leads the party is the November 4th college. Over 200,000 people. That college cannot be influenced. This was in 90, eh? 900. 900. Oh. And, and the reality is that on Saturday, people are going to vote based on relations. Mm. People are going to vote based on interest. At the top, I mean, somebody will be voting for somebody because he has relations. I am voting for Alan on Saturday. Not because only because I think Alan is competent, but because I have, I have a relationship, relation with him. Mm -hmm. Same way somebody will be voting for Kennedy because he has had a relation. My constituency chairman, he, he'll be, because he, I mean, he, he grew up with Kennedy. He knows Kennedy very well. So, so you know he'll be voting for Kennedy? Yes. Oh, okay. And, and virtually every day we talk. I mean, we laugh at each other. And we, I mean, we, we are okay because we believe that this is not the contest. The real contest is November 4th mm. when the over 200,000 people will be given the opportunity to vote. Mm. When those 200,000 people will be looking at the candidates who is, who, who is likely to win as the 2024 elections. Not, not what some big man sitting somewhere is saying. Who is that big man? Is he? <laughs> no, uh, please, no, don't, don't get me wrong. Oh, I'm but I'm only saying that, that, for instance, uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, I go and vote on Saturday for Alan. I have not even consulted my polling station people for them to tell me that go and vote for this person or go and vote for I'm going to do that because I've person. had the oppor opportunity and I have, the, I have the conviction that let me vote for Alan. That he is the best person for yes. his job. But probably maybe when you come to my polling station, that may not be the case. Yeah. In fact, on my polling station platform, that is the most liberalized platform you can ever have on, on it. I mean, you have the Kennedys campaigning for Kennedy, you have Dr. Oh. Baumier's people campaigning, you have Alan Tremati's people, you have uh, uh, Akoto, I uh, have uh, one pastor who is Akoto's campaign manager. <laughs> In my constituency, and every day <laughs> is, we put in, a, a, in our places uh, Akoto's adverts and everything on, on our platform. So clearly, I mean, we all have a choice, and, and that choice will manifest on November 4th. But it looks like Kennedy is coming up uh, in, in this. Well, Kennedy, Kennedy should come up. Mm. Because, you see, Kennedy, for me, uh, speaks the language of the, of the grassroots. That, that is what I have seen. I mean... Uh, uh, you see, everybody wants some form of protection. Everybody wants somebody who is able to speak out for him, and I think Kennedy does that best. I mean, but but that said, uh, the there are other factors that delegates will also consider. Mm -hmm. So if Kennedy gets a uh, ten percent on Saturday, and you think that because he's gotten ten percent, he has ten percent at the grounds then you are getting it all wrong. Okay. All right. You know, there is a popular 
da gumba proverb da wahtaba nyanga da nya wulana when the chief is on his horse you know in the palace there are titles or if you like offices held by individuals they are like even in any traditional setup we call someone the wulana who you can describe as the spokesperson of the chief mm. when the chief is on his horse attending an occasion or a walk you know riding the wulana is always in the front so there's a saying that when the horse is kicking at the back it doesn't concern the wulana because he's mm. on front but the reason why i want to comment on this because i am a participant active participant in this journey of democracy in ghana mm. You see, Ken made a famous statement. And by the way, he said, if he is elected president, he's going to appoint me minister. And I said, which ministry? He said, minister for mischief. <laughs> <laughs> Ken made a statement. And which for me, people to downplay that statement. He said, look, all those who have contributed in creating the mess of this country should not be elected. And he thinks that, so people wanted to know, he said, those who participated in this government, he doesn't have any appointment in this government. I have seen that there is an attempt to claim certain individuals. But let me state here, no amount of perfume from Arabia, you know, oud, oud perfume. Saudi Arabia is where you have the best oud. Mm. That's what I use. No amount of oud perfume from Saudi Arabia can claim any of them. They have created this mess. And the three people, and I agree with him, Dr. Baumia, Alan Chirmantin, and uh, Honorable Alan Chirmantin, and Honorable Ken, I strongly believe that one, one of them, I mean the three of them are already there. I am told, the Minister for Greek, that he hates Dr. Baumia to the marrow. Okay. He accuses his father for treating his father in a way. And in fact, I know for a fact that, the, the, yes, oh please, yes. I know for a fact that the Vice President invited the Minister for Greek on countless times to sit to discuss issues on Greek. he refused because he feels that his father betrayed his father and ensured that the Nkrumah's administration dealt with his father. That is their internal wrangling. They can even be killing each other. That is none of my business because I am a Wulana walking in front of the horse. Mm -hmm. But the point I am making is that, look, these elections, and I'm happy for that subtle admission that this government has messed up. When he said that he was sitting in Natu Abapa, mm -hmm. so if MPP people themselves, or Mubeki or Mubeki sitting in Natu Abapa, then what do we do? I hope I haven't broken this. You have, you How have. about those of us who are not members of the government? The 2024 elections are going to be contested on the basis of the living conditions of the people of this country. Now you see, all the three candidates he mentioned, apart from Ken, they have participated in taking the debt to GDP of this country from a little over 60% they took from President Mahama to over 100%. Remember, it went to 104%. They have participated in taking the city from three cities, 70 percent, as stated by Mr. Ken Ajapoim, Kennedy Ajapoim himself, to almost 12 cities today. They have participated in taking the unemployment rate of this country from President Mahama 6.8 to almost 14 percent. It went to 17.4, then it, it, it came down. In fact, they have participated in borrowing over 400 billion. Yet, you don't see anything tangible. Mm. They know President Mahama borrowed a little over 50 billion. The Pokwasi Interchange Phase 1 is there to show. The Obechebelamte Interchange Phase 1 is there to show. The Legon Hospital is there to show. The Rich Hospital is there to show. The Tepa Hospital is there to show. The KJTR Market is there to show. The Yuri Yuri what did you do? It was, it was an NDC project, the Phase 1. Mm -hmm. They can't deny that. The phase one of Obichabilamti is an end is today. They are claiming ownership of the Tamale Airport. I mean, how ridiculous. How ridiculous. They said phase you two. came in phase two. You came in and changed. Look, the loan agreement was signed by the NDC. You came in and changed the contract. A company that is doing that and you want to claim ownership. And in any case, the runway is signed quite on. To the extent that the people in the north who used to participate in Hyde, some of them will come to Elwak, some will die. Today, people can fly from Tamale to Jidda. In fact, they can do their Tuonzafi, do it, prepare it, and go to Jidda and eat the Tuonzafi. They want to claim ownership. President Mahama borrowed a little over 50 billion. They borrowed over 400 billion. What is there to show? The people of this country know 
the decency in governance. When the president, mm -hmm. then candidate Nanado, said okay. in Kumasi okay. that he was not going to run family and friends government. Mm. It is only under this government. When President Mama had only his, his name, okay. his, the, the, I'm this, saying that it is, only, opportunity it is only under this Mr. government. Mm. I pay, to engage in I pay my taxes to him. Uh, uh, you see the logic. You see, okay. it is only in this government. Right. Go to Tamale. Have you seen okay. the new airport oh, in Tamale? Let me just conclude. Have you it seen is only like, under this government. MP for Tamale. Have you oh, seen the airport in Tamale? It is only under this government. Have you seen the airport oh, in Tamale? It is only. Can I finish? Have you seen, the, you. Have you seen the airport in it Tamale? It is only under Allah. this government that, frankly, and with all sincerity, the Afro barometer described this government as the most corrupt government ever. In fact, the, the corruption perception index. The lowest president, Muhammad Chok, has been what this government is celebrating. Okay. President Muhammad Chok, the highest ever. You see, decency in governance, mm. acceptability of how this country runs. You have a president who had been a minister of foreign affairs, poking his nose into conflicts that has nothing to do with us. More so, when we share boundaries with those countries. Which one are you talking about? When he, he went and talked about the Wagner, to what end? A very sensible and very forward-looking, in fact, let me take the sensible out, a very forward-looking president would have known that we share boundaries with this country. Which country? And Burkina. Uh -huh. And we need to be very careful couching our diplomatic language. Okay. You know what happened? Ghanaians right. have been killed. You saw in Niger yesterday. Mm. Ghanaian truck drivers, 15, were burned. Someone was killed. Mm. Because you have a, foreign, a former foreign minister who ought to to no, but don't get yourself they, they have not as, as I uh, you know uh, connected it to what the president said. They have not what. There hasn't been any connection between. Do you know the what, tension what? that brews in our bodies, particularly between Upper West and Burkina, mm. and between Paga and Burkina? Mm. Do you know? Because of what? It's frightening. Because our right. president poked his nose in issues. Ah, why? In have, this you, have you done a study to link the two? That because because of what the president said. That, I, that, I, as, as a matter of fact, I can be qualified to be an expert on conflict. I did international relations. No, but I'm saying that. Have you done? Have you done a research oh, to coming. connect the two? I don't two. need to do research, mm. and I don't need to do research because the 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 teaching I got from those professors, and in fact, my thesis was actually on conflicts in the West African sub-region. I, 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 can, I can look at examples the learned, of similar... The learned, no, the I can look at... I'm just telling you, I can look at examples of okay. such happening in other jurisdictions. The aspects you call, do they do any research there? Why don't okay. you call them to speak on some of this? I, oh, they do research. I'm, so who told you? I haven't do, done research. Okay, I, that's why I wanted to help me out with that one. Thank you so I'm much. I'm saying something. I look <laughs> thank, at you, thank you so much. I'm happy he has admitted that <laughs> things are bad. Thank you for that admission. <laughs> I like it because of his Mut sincerity. Mutala Mohammed. <laughs> Is MP for Tamale Central and Davis Opoku is MP for Prime. So, okay. Davis, all the best to you and your team on, yeah, on Saturday. Oh, I, I've told you on Saturday is just an administrative process. We are going to select five out of the ten. Oh, so you can even, you can even sleep and, and go through eh? it. And Alan will be there. Oh, certainly, Alan will be there. I mean, sure. so. I mean, what matters is November 4th. Okay. That, for me, is my focus. That's why you are doing the yeah. proper work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know why they are doing that? They are doing that so that the vice president can test where they will use money so much. In the November, November. anyway, ah, you uh, have the gentleman at, uh, at Buffer Stop. Uh, yeah, I'm grateful. Stop. Hey, the gentleman at Buffer Stop, my, so my kid brother Hannah. He said, uh, Thank at you. At the original thank Congress, some were given 30. Th thank you for coming. In. Video. Well, um, it's now official Joy Prime, Joy FM, and other MGL platforms are media partners for the biggest carnival in Ghana, the Chale Water Street Art Festival. It's an annual colorful festival of sights and scenes with thousands of revelers to be treated to rich African heritage, art, dance, street painting, graffiti, murals. You name it. And trust me, with the multimedia group involved, it's going to be an explosion. And it already is. It's going to be a promotion of our creative arts economy while achieving the mission to sell and promote Ghana. And just as the name uh, Chale Water suggests, the festival is flip-flopping to a new location this year. To this year, it's in Osu. So come along. Let's go make unforgettable memories at Osu from now till 27th of uh, August 2023. That's it. We're taking a break here. We'll be back with more. Stay with us.
All right, now the Christ the King International School is holding its Family Fun Day. Would, uh, uh, well, we'll be telling you much more about it because we've been joined in the studio by Portia Feliz Mensa, who is the headmistress of Christ the King International School, and also with her is Audrey Sintin, parent and chairperson of the Christ the King International School Family Fund Day Planning Committee, and they are all here. Let me start with the headmistress. Uh, well, anyway, good morning and welcome. Good morning. Good morning. I love to have beautiful <laughs> women on the show all the time. You know, it sparks up the day. Yeah? Uh, women are like the bright morning star in our lives. Without you, the world would have been uh, we're having an ugly place for all of us. Because <laughs> imagine you wake up to see all these ugly faces in the morning. It's not nice at all. At all. That we have you women. And so, mm. um, Thanks let's for talk about us. Let's talk about the history of Christ the King. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, so Christ the King International School mm was founded by one Reverend Father Leslie Hartfield, mm -hmm. SVD, in 1956. Mm -hmm. You know, around that time, we had some Catholic expatriates who were living in and around the enclave of cantonments, oh, okay. and they needed a Catholic school for their kids. Mm -hmm. And Reverend Father Hartfield was the parish priest of Christ the King Parish. So they pleaded with him to get a school for their children. Mm -hmm. And with the active participation of the missionary sisters of the servants of the Holy Spirit, that is SSPS, together they founded Christ the King International School. Mm -hmm. And they started with six students, three British, two Americans, and two Ghanaians. Okay. So in 1961, the first common entrance was written, okay. and they all passed with distinction. Okay. Just around that time, the construction of Tema Harbor also okay. came into being, and we had a lot of expatriates also enrolling their children into the school. Mm. And that is where we got a true sense of international school. Okay. And just after that, Christ the King International School expanded. And currently, we have 838 student population. Wow. Yes. Wow. Yes. So it was basically a school for the whites? It was. Mm. It was. It was. It but was. neither school for all of us. For all of us. <laughs> for all of us. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I like it, especially, uh, you know, uh, when it started in those days, yeah, it means it's been it's been more than sixty years, huh? Yeah, it is. Wow, it is. So From nineteen fifty six to now, to date, so, a long time. Yeah, so from that time, we have produced excellent results, and mm. we have alumni across the country, in and abroad. Okay. Yes. It's international. Yes. So you've gone international as well. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, what about the you know, the fun, the fun days, I mean, how, how did it start? What preempted that we should start this? And again, what sort of importance does it have for children and parents? Okay, so the fun day is an activity that's organized by the PTA of mm -hmm. Christ the King International School. And it's an annual event mm -hmm. that has been in existence for quite some time. Um, I think the last one that was held was in 2019 and after that we haven't had another one till now due to the covid crisis that was experienced at that time and they had, there was concerns about gathering so many people at one place even after covid sort of went down but this year we are back with the bank mm. the pta has set up a committee which um, i'm honored to be the chairperson of and we have four other members uh, mr Elim Ado. There's um, Josephine Duncan, and then also a teacher, Mrs. Um, Ifia Sapong. Sorry, as parents, Mrs. Ifia Sapong, who together with the headmistress are part of the committee organizing this year's um, CTKIS Family Fund Day. Now, you would ask why do we think it's important to have this Family Fund Day? That's several reasons. One is that we've identified that it increases socialization in children, okay. which is very vital for their development, especially at that age. Mm -hmm. Aside that, there's this misconception that children live a carefree life and have no stresses. 
But these days, due to studies and also other activities that are expected of them, our kids can be rather stressed. And so a family find is an opportunity for them to enjoy themselves and also relax. And then it creates an opportunity for bonding between fam parents, the family, and the children so that uh, there's an atmosphere that um, creates enabling atmosphere for parents and their children to bond, just interact and have fun. Mm -hmm. And it is also very vital for the community as well because it offers an opportunity for parents to get to know each other aside just meeting at the car park in the morning when we are dropping our kids off and actually interact, sometimes share notes on how to deal and handle with our kids. It's an opportunity for parents and teachers to also interact with each other in a more relaxed environment, an opportunity for the alumni to be present and also come back to the school where they came from and give back to it in a, you know, basically open to the general public. Everybody just comes in, has a lot of fun for one whole day and then, you know, we get back to our busy lives. Mm. Is there anything you would want to do after this? Like, say, raise some funds to do a certain project after the event? Yes. Um, so, basically, we are redeveloping Christ the King International School. Oh. Since its inception in 1956, the old structures still exist. Mm. And it will interest you to know that last week, 1973-year group, when they visited, my office, they reminisced their time when they were in school and they went to their various classrooms and took pictures. And um, we are redeveloping Christ the King. The phase one is almost completed. Mm -hmm. In October, 12 classes will be moving into the new building. And they, were, they weren't too happy because we are going to demolish some of the structures mm -hmm. to start with the phase two. Okay. And um, they still want us to keep the, the old, old structures, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. Yes, but um, we, are, we, are, we are international school and we want to move from that to we are in the 21st century and we want to have a feel of, um, you know, new things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. so we, we, we are going to use the proceeds to redevelop Christ the King. Okay. We want to go to smart boards. We want to refurbish the ICT lab. Okay. We also want to motivate our teachers. And we also want to get, a, uh, get money for um, a school bus. Oh, so okay. the proceeds from the family fund day, we are going to keep some as a seed money to get a school bus. Mm. And if there are alumni out there, if somebody can even get us a school bus right away, Why not? we would be delighted. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, so what kind of activities will happen on the day? And, and if vendors are supposed to be there, what do they do? Oh, there are so many activities mm. for the day. I'd like to mention a few of the um, vendors and activities that we're <clears> going to have. We're going to have Farmani. Um, Farm Farmani. Family, yes. Hey. They'll be selling organic vegetables of all sorts. And we invite you to come and just purchase a few. We'll have healthy concepts. We'll be selling grills and also fresh fruit juice. We'll have fries, yam, kelewele, chicken wings on display. There'll be juicy mini pancakes. She'll be there to make mini pancakes and waffles. Mm -hmm. We'll have junkies burgers. We'll have pizza man. We'll have Pinocchio ice cream. We'll have the beverage company with slushies, mocktails, and smoothies. We'll have Perky's granola, serving granola and parfait. We'll have Ali snacks with assorted snacks. We'll have Thumbs Up Eatery, Annabelle Enterprise, Crafty Bakers, Golden Foods, Kitchen Aroma, there'll be kebabs, cotton candy, popcorn, fan milk products, assorted bottles and drinks. And that's just on the food side. No, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You are causing me to salivate too. No, 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 no. <laughs> Aside that, we also have other people who will be selling other things, such mm -hmm. as Nova Wellness Center, who will be giving mini seated massages, mm -hmm. sale of laptop stands, posture braids, car seats, supports, and other spine and health items. We'll have Reader's Haven, who will be selling kids and adults books. Mm -hmm. Also, there will be Nerodak, selling wax prints and disposables. There'll be colors and more selling lunch boxes and school bags. We'll have Willie's Ventures selling cosmetics. And Koffa will also be there selling some kente. And we'll have a photo book with a 360 
I think okay. photos, there'll mm -hmm. be still pictures. Mm -hmm. There are lots of exciting stuff. Mm -hmm. Also, by way of activities, we'll have face painting. There'll be multiple bouncy castles. Okay. There'll be trampoline, horse riding, real horses. We'll have archery, electronic basketball. Right. We'll have table football. We'll have table tennis, giant Jenga, giant EXO. We'll also have video gaming station for the kids who love to play their video games. There'll be the PlayStation 5 and all of that. There'll be a dance hall for those who love to dance with disco lights and mm. the works. And then also what is really exciting about this year is that we've given the children in Christ the King an opportunity to taste entrepreneurship. So they are allowed to come up with business ideas. Mm. They are going to buy stands at very discounted prices with the permission of their parents. And they are going to sell their wares. And at the end of the day, we are going to see who makes a profit, who makes a loss. And profit or loss, I think it will give them a good lesson Experience. on entrepreneurship and perhaps putting them some fire in, in their belly mm. towards their uh, entrepreneurial journey. Wow. And then I'd like to mention also that despite all of these, there are still a lot of stalls available. So if anybody is interested in selling at the Christ the King Fan Fair, mm. Family Fan Day, they are more than welcome to contact us. And for as long as nobody else is serving what they have to offer, they'll get to store because we are offering exclusivity to our vendors. Wow. Mm -hmm. This is really packed. Yeah. Okay. But so is it open to the general public? If someone wants to sponsor, what do they do? Yeah, it is, it is open to the general public. Mm -hmm. And um, we are calling on everybody to sponsor us and um, we need, we need money for the project that we have um, started embarking on. The project, uh, phase one of the project is almost done. And we are left with four other phases that we are going to start with the second one. So we need money. We need mm. money. Mm. So the general public, we are calling on you to come and sponsor us mm -hmm. and so that we would... We build Christ the King mm. International School. Okay, I'm sure yes. there are a lot of. So we're calling all alumni. alumni. Our mm. PTA chair is 1988 year group, and she is doing fantastically well. Mm. So we are calling all of them to come and support her. Mm. Justina Lane is calling all of you to come and support her. I'm sure there are a lot of them in the banks. And of all these course. high places, they should bring their companies to sponsor. Yeah. It's going to be a great yes. day, but you'll have to pay for how you've made me salivate this morning. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm sure it's not going to be a free event. No. Um, so if someone. So it's a program that's open to everybody. It's mm. not only for Christ the King parents or kids, mm. it's open to the general public. And tickets are currently going for 20 Ghana cities only. Mm. And you can get that by. Um, um, through Momo, star 713 star 960 hash, star 713 star 906 hash. Mm -hmm. You can buy multiple tickets um, at a time. You can buy multiple of 10 tickets at a time. Mm -hmm. You'll get an SMS message that gives you a link to QR codes for you to use at the gate. So you need to um, show that at the gate when you come. Mm -hmm. On the day, the price will change from 20 CDs to 25 CDs. Oh. So we are encouraging everybody to buy their tickets mm -hmm. in advance. Mm -hmm. Okay, interesting. And, and that's, this is how it's going to go down on... Uh, so so when, when is this happening? 9th September. 9th September. 9th September. Yes. All right. Um, from what time to what time? From 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Okay. From 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Yes. Okay. So on the yeah. 9th of September, the all roads lead to the Christ the King International School. Is that what yes. will be happening or will yes. be happening yes. elsewhere? Christ the King. At the compound. King. Okay. Yeah. And is it big enough to accommodate all of us? Oh, yes. too big. Uh, because too from big. what you've enumerated, Mazas, yes. Oh, yes. We too want big. to come and eat waffles, <laughs> pizza, granula, all of these yes. things. Labs, popcorn, mm. classic candy, grills, yes. slushies. Fresh organic vegetables, everything. Too big. Mm. Come and let's have fun. Okay. My office is open. Mm. Everybody can come in. Everybody who is ready to sponsor us in any way, cash or kind, can visit my office mm. at any time. 
Okay. Sponsor. If someone is watching and maybe someone is interested, mm. can you put a number across? They can call you or anybody so that you talk about All right. So my number is 0244-766-370-020-3112-3031. Mm. Uh, can, can you go over the number again for me? 0244 Zero two zero one one two thirty thirty one. Mm. Mrs. Portia Felix Mensa. Okay. All right. So that's it. Uh, let us all meet there and have a great time together and help rebuild uh, Christ the King International School. Uh, this is proper, proper international. Started <laughs> way back with the white. Proper international. School. Yeah. And let's see what we can all do. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming. Thank, Thank you for having Thanks us. Thanks for having us. So, yeah, you heard uh, from uh, Portia Feliz, main missus. She's headmistress, Christ the King International School. Audrey Sintim is parent and chairperson of the plan Family Fund Day Planning Committee of the school. Thanks so much for coming through. Thank you. All Thanks right. for having us. This is still the AM show on the Joy Nish channel. Um, uh, would uh, speak to the University of Mines and Technology on, on a great feat they've achieved. Um, I spoke to you about this morning that they topped the virtual directional drilling rig simulator design option in 2022-2023 International Robotics Competition, which is organized by Drilling Systems Automation Technical Section on behalf of the Society of Petroleum Engineers. We have them here. Uh, up next after this. Let's talk to the people, um, I mean, back in school, if someone does science, engineering, you say these are the sharks. So this morning, I've been joined by the sharks from the University of Mines and Technology, UMAT, for us to talk about that feat that they've achieved. Aaron uh, Ontuyin is a second year electrical and electronic engineering student, UMAT, and Joel Sechi Mensa is a petroleum engineer. He's a graduate, but currently, he is a research and teaching assistant at the university. Uh, gentlemen, good morning. Welcome. Good morning. Thank uh, you very much. I mean, great to have you. Have engineers around me. But, and congrats as well. That feat, uh, feat you attained is, is really great. Um, how did you make it? Because you were the only uh, reps from Africa. So you represented not Ghana, but Africa. And you won. How, how did you do it? Yes, so um, first of all, I would say that robotics is a condition mm. and I see it to be more or less like a research project okay. that we use to solve problems in the drilling industry. Mm. So the, it makes the project very difficult and um, you need to be very dedicated to be able to sustain and come this far. So um, I think University of Mines played a key role mm -hmm. in our journey and in our success in that the hallmark of University of Mines and Technology is knowledge, truth, and excellence. It has prepared us, made us think critically, and solve problems very well. Mm -hmm. So it all factored in and played a role mm -hmm. into bringing us this far. So w what did you do to win the competition? Yes. So basically, what we did was we designed a drilling simulator, and um, we use programming languages to do that. So we created a digital twin or a digital replica of the directional drilling process to be able to simulate the process before you can commence your actual drilling operation, hence saving cost. Mm. So, I mean, let's say you are on the high sea, yeah. Westgate three point. Yes. And the FPSO is there, it's going to start drilling, right? That's what you mean. Yes. But before you go there, you have created a simulator that we can sit here yes. and create that environment to see whether we'll be successful or how to go about it before you, you do it. Yes. Oh. Exactly. Wow. And um, the oil and gas industry, the operations that we undergo, they are capital intensive. 
So, so you always need to plan before you carry out any operations. Mm. So we decided, okay, then we can also go into planning. We design, you, you simulate the process, you mm. anticipate certain problems that can occur. Then after doing that, you know how to strategize yourself and come back and prepare very well before you start the actual drilling. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm blown away by this. But we all know how expensive drilling is and the reason why even when it comes to Ghana, you know, signing the agreement, we are always at the, at the uh, we're being shortchanged because we don't come on board with some of these technologies. So this could probably be a game changer, yes. isn't it? Yes. And I saw my, my production team run it. If you can run us through, I mean, it's all about learning. Let's learn. So production team will put it up again and then you take us through it. Yes. When I come back, I'll ask him because he's telling school. What's a, what, what this experience means to him as a student. So run us through how this simulation that you put up is done. Okay. So um, we have three sections of our simulation. Mm. We have the wall plan, we have the drill string design, and we have the simulation itself. Mm. So um, the wall plan deals with generating the trajectory the wall needs to follow to hit the target. When I say target, where the oil and gas is located. Mm. So it designs the optimal path that you should take to hit the target, mm. considering the formation characteristics. So your formation hardness. So, so is this all we see on the screen? So, yes. so explain to us yes. I mean, what's happening on the screen. Yes, OK. So you could see in the sidebar, you input your parameters. OK. So your formation, your survey station, then um, it gives you the, um, the trajectory or the work plan, so you can have it in 2D or in 3D. So you click 2D, 3D. I think this one is the next section, which is the drawstring section. It's optimized the selection of the drawstring by considering the torque and drag. Okay. I know this is quite technical, but mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah, let's just take it as so. So after selecting the optimal drawstring selection, you can also come in with what you want to select. Then after that, you go to the simulation part you run, so as you can see, it's running. Mm. Yes, and you also get to display some of your parameters. So, so, if, so what okay. we see on the screen now is what? It's like the well. Is this the well? Yes, so that's the well. Okay. So you realize that that was the plan, mm. and you realize that there's a green part. Yeah, it was blue, and then it was changing into green. Yes, mm -hmm. so the green part is the well part. Okay. So when you start the simulation, the simulated part is the green part. Mm. So it shows how you are going to draw. Okay. So the drilling progress, you realize that there were some small deviations, mm -hmm. but it wasn't very visible because we made the time stamp at every five seconds so to update and correct. Okay. Yeah, okay. So that was it. And you get to see um, your parameters, whether your draw string is backlink, mm -hmm. whether you, are, you have a very high tug and drag, whether um, your tug on bit, your weight on bit is too much, whether your RPM is within the expected range. Mm. Has this ever been done before you did it? Okay, so um, for this particular software, we have giants in the industry um, designing these softwares. Mm. In the likes of J, which is now SLB, Halliburton, oh, okay. Huge. okay. So they have these software. Mm. But it's very interesting that this time around, we have students also designing these softwares for the industry. So you designed this from scratch? Yes, we designed this from scratch. Mm -hmm. okay. um, uh, oh, your name is Ontoyin, eh? Yeah, Ontoyin. That's, that's, that's a beautiful name. Uh, you. you are in level 200. Yeah. What sort of, what does this experience mean to you, being part of this team, to have designed this? It actually means a lot. It has exposed me to teamwork, like working with uh, my teammates from other departments, it's actually been a very good experience. And also uh, putting the things I learned in class into practice and other things I learned out of class into practice. Mm -hmm. Like I got to put my coding skills into practice. Like sometimes I learn how to code, learn how to do this. But then this project has been one of the biggest projects I've actually ever worked on, like in my programming career. Wow, wow. And, and so and what, what does that bring you? Having put your coding experience to, to, to practice in this such a manner, working with this team, what does that mean to you and your career? 
it it means a lot. Mm -hmm. It means a lot because this uh, a kind of experience that I will never forget. The research work we had to do, like the sleepless nights. Sometimes I just remember and I feel so happy about it because it was actually real. It, it was really interesting. Mm -hmm. And also, this is not something small. Like the certificate I gained from it to actually carry heavy weight when I take it somewhere for anything else. So wow. I think it's actually good. I'm happy for you guys. We are, not, we are not too brilliant to be doing this, but I'm excited <laughs> that you guys are doing it. Yeah. So, I mean, when I sit here, I want to look at the relevance of this, what you've done on Ghana's oil and gas industry. What, what does it mean to, to the industry, I mean, the, 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 the general industry? Okay, so I'll say that um, the objective of every oil and gas company mm. is to cut down cost and again to reduce non-productive time and improve upon the safety. And um, the way forward in achieving this is by looking at automation and data-driven approaches. And this software achieves just that. So that was the basic concept that was used to establish this software. That's to provide a means to automate the drilling process and provide a data-driven approach mm. for the industry to be able to cut down costs mm. and um, improve upon their safety. So with what we saw on TV, yes. can a company take it now and try to use it and it will work perfectly for them? Okay. So for now, the company can use it Mm. But there are a lot of upgrades that needs to be done. Okay. So we are looking at collaborating with the industries. Mm. We could, if we could get support to collaborate with the industries mm. to help us so that we design the software to be a very robust software. Mm. Mm. Very excited for you guys. Um, what does this bring to the investor of mines and technology? Which, of course, let me state that is in the Western region. Mm. So that everybody knows that, as we say, uh, you know, the best is always coming from the West. Yeah? yeah, it's only unfortunate that when we give Ghana the best, we are giving the West. But I'm sure we overcome that one. Yeah. But what does this mean to you, Matt? Yes. So um, I think it has really, really, really um, impacted you, Matt, in a way that um, now we have people who are. Um, before I come to the main question, I'll mm. say that. For this particular software, you need to really understand the concept okay. because you cannot build anything without understanding the underlying physics behind it. Mm -hmm. So it has exposed the students to gain a lot of knowledge in the industry. And again, too, it has projected the name of the university very far. Mm -hmm. And um, I believe you might is great. Uh, when you look at the likes of um, Caleb Mante and um, Liquidization, who were also past um, product of UMAT. Okay. They also won the presidential award. Mm. So mm. I think um, it has projected the name of UMAT, and UMAT has also played a very great role mm. in shaping us to come this far. Wow. I'm sure after this, some of you will be sought after. For example, you, yes. Slumber J, and all of those people will be coming after you that know we want to take you away from UMAT. And he, in level 200, is already marking that just after school, he will be grabbed away. Isn't that the case for you? I mean, personally. Okay. Yeah, I hope to achieve that. Mm. Um, we, 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 try to, we try to get in touch with the companies mm. and see if we can um, make some presentations to them. Mm. And um, for now, the only publicity we've made is um, on LinkedIn. I think that's where most of the companies are. So... We've been able to display what we have on LinkedIn okay. mm. to them. So the next phase, we are looking at getting in touch with them so that if they could also provide us with um, funding funding or attachment or anything. To try and develop the soft software further. Yes, because okay. um, we actually designed the software without any experience in the oil and gas. I mean, working in the oil and gas industry. Mm. So I have no experience in the oil and gas industry working. In but you still won the competition, yes. which means that the the uh, I mean those who marked you saw something in, in the design, and that's why they took you. Yes, I I remember when we were presenting uh, software to the robotics committee, they were very happy. Mm. They were very happy, and they were willing to have a conversation with us. Mm. Yes, that everything is perfect. 
very excited for you guys. Um, I don't know if my producer would, would, would ask us to uh, try and engage the public on this. This is good news that Ghana needs to celebrate, you know. Um, I'm excited for you guys. Was there a female on the, on the team? Yes, there was a female on the wow. team. Wow, what's her name? Um, Precious Sego. She's okay. currently um, level 200 petroleum engineer. Mm. Okay, so, so these, these are the members, you know, uh, of the team. Uh, okay. You are the one there. Yes. Uh, se second from left. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Wonderful. So give us their names so that everybody who's watching can know. Yeah. Okay. So the very first from left is Joe Edu Ewuku. So he is a final year. He will be graduating this year. Okay. Petroleum engineering. Mm. And then, um, of course, that's me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm currently a research and teaching assistant okay. at UMAT. Mm. And um, next is De La Eram. Mm. And, um, he's his a, his, his pedacles show that he's a, he's a shark. Yes, he, uh, he's actually also a computer guy. Okay. So he yeah. has a, he's from the computer, and si computer science and engineering okay. final year. Mm. And that is Precious Sego. Okay. Um, she looks familiar. But, uh, wow. Yeah. Okay. And that is Aaron Unti Yen yeah. from Electrical and Electronics. And that is Edujen Fee. Okay. A final year student, petroleum engineering. Congrats, guys! You've done so well. This, this is, this is, this means a lot to to you, yes. and not just to you, to you, Matt, to Ghana, West Africa, and Africa because you represented as well and you won, right? Yes. From I'm told uh, six countries yes. participated in this. Yes. And you won for Ghana. Yes. What's the next phase after winning? What next? Okay, so you are looking forward to collaborating with the industry to, as we said earlier, to make the software very robust software. But I mean, after winning the competition, is there any further thing you are to, supposed to do in the competition or that's it? Okay, I think that's it, so okay. you usually prepare. Okay, so um, usually for robotics, what happens is that they look at problems in the drilling industry mm -hmm. and they bring it into the competition for students to also get the opportunity to solve. Mm -hmm. So by next year, they have another set of problems they would like students to solve. Mm -hmm and they bring it on board for students to work on. Okay. All right, very interesting. Um, uh, well, I, I'm, I'm sure we can pick one or two calls to celebrate these young people who've done this for Ghana. Uh, you know, so um, uh, my, my, my producer, uh, Derek Akosam, he's happy that you've won this, so he would activate the phone line so that we can pick one or two calls for you guys, on young, young Ghanaians who are doing extraordinary things. Um, 0302 uh, 211691. Call us and let's uh, have this chat together. These are young Ghanaians who are doing a lot for, for the country. They, they, I mean, they want this not for the country, but they want for Africa as well. Let's hear from you. Uh, 0302 211691. Let's celebrate these young people for what they've done. I mean, um, it's for their personal development, but it, 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 it also feeds on us as well, or rubs on all of us, because we are all in Ghana. When they said Ghana won, you and I won as well. So uh, what kind of words do you have for them? 030 um, You can decide to also touch on the issues that we discussed here this morning. Uh, let's get talking, but uh, we are grateful that you made us a part of you. But let's now keep get talking. Like I said, your thoughts is very much appreciated, and this is the time for you to join us with your comment, 0302211691. We have some, uh, just few time to pick about two calls. You can be uh, one of them celebrating these young people, you know. Uh, Onto him, so for you, you are in level 200. Have, have you, are you in school or are you on vacation? I'm still in school. You are, you are, you are, you are not on vacation yet? Yeah. We'll so, be writing our exam on Monday. So when you went to campus, how was it like? Everybody was celebrating you guys, huh? Uh, yeah. Has the university uh, thrown a party for you? Okay, yeah. They've done that already? Yes, we went to Goldfields. Um, okay. We went to spend some time and we had a lunch. Ah. Yeah. Uh, prof, prof, prof has to give you some special dispensations. Yeah. yeah. Because you brought, you brought uh, um, uh, Anna to the University of Mines and Technology. Well, we have someone from Bolga joining us. Ignatius, good morning. How are you? Let's hear you. We've lost Ignatius. Um, okay, I think we've lost Ignatius. Who would we be getting on the line here? 
uh, if you call us kindly, don't listen to the television. Listen to yourself on the phone so we can have a very uh, flowy conversation. Yeah. Well, um, that, so before I let you go, what will be your last words to those who are watching us? Okay. So our special thanks goes to multimedia groups of company for hosting us to... Okay. Hold on for me. Moses calling out from, from Savannah. Moses, let's hear you. Yes. The guys are so amazing and brilliant. Thank you. Thank you, Moses. Uh, uh, what I have to say is that um, our leaders, they should put politics and everything aside and then uh, support this uh, young leaders so that they'll be able to carry Ghana uh, to uh, the highest, uh, the, 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 the whole of Africa, so that okay. uh, they, they, they'll raise the good name of Ghana. Okay. All right. Moses, thank you very much for joining us here. So that's uh, from Moses. Uh, Moses says that you have to be supported. So you're making a point. Um, when, when he came in, yeah. Yeah, and again, to a special thanks go to our mentor, and in the person of Mr. Graham Wilmot Mensa, okay. who also happens to be the director, the technical director of XCI Drill. Oh, okay. And okay. he actually helped us because we don't have any field experience. He guided us, mentored us into refining whatever we have now. Mm. Mm -hmm. And again, to a special thanks go to, goes to the Vice Chancellor of the University of Mice, mm -hmm. Professor okay. Richard Amankwa. Okay. All right. Okay. So uh, to all the teachers at UMAT, uh, I have a few friends there, Dr. Frank Boating and Dr. Kofi Kamasa. You guys have done incredible. And kudos to all of you uh, for what you've done. Um, grateful to you, uh, Antoine and uh, uh, Joel, for coming through. Yeah, All the best as well. And on that beautiful and exciting note, we wrap up today's edition of the AM show. It's been incredible and grateful that you made us a part of your morning. Do enjoy the rest of our programs here on the Joy News Channel. We'll meet again, God willing, tomorrow. Until then, please be good. <laughs>